from this, I don't have a whole lot of intermediate story. But there is a stream that takes place not too long after. You kind of saw the preview of it with the first video. Um, but this next uh, video is going to really kind of give a our first real direct encounter with uh, Eric July and with Dick Masterson. Now, Dick's already put his criticisms out there. I'm sure that's gotten back to Eric July. Eric July obviously disagrees with this, seeing A, his comic's fucking successful and exists. B, um, it's continuing to be successful. And so we get this, we get this unique encounter that really kind of, it's kind of the first explosion in a series of, in a series of like, uh, small explosions that then drop this whole thing into where it gets to all right so this is flashcast so this is yellow flashes show um i believe ethan's somewhat regular on here um i know the umbrella guy is eric july is here they're about to pull a bit of a surprise with dick masterson on eric july i feel like i don't know if this was necessarily planned nina again another returning face um, and then I don't know who Raging Rhino or Riot Press is, but again, probably not very necessary to what you're about to see. He's here. Welcome to the stream, Dick Masterson. Hello. What's up, guys? Thanks for having me on. Eric, what are you doing, man? Why are you this sensitive to simple criticism? Like, even coming from Ethan, who's like an industry veteran, dude. Again, remember when Dick started the video and he said he was going to do that one stream and then be done? Never fucking do shit again. And so he was in here and they were having a heated discussion. And Eric and uh, Ethan were, were going back and forth. But at this point, remember, Eric and Ethan are on the same side. So he's coming to him as a friend. And just saying, look, I think Dick has some valid criticisms. It comes off as so childish and insecure. You know that, right? I disagree. I think I think you're dramatizing what's happening, but I'm cool with that. You well, have read chat, buddy. Read chat, because they know. Chat always knows. That's you're cool. coming up for a guy who made 3.7 million fucking dollars that you can't take, like, basic story structure critiques that i didn't I'm even i'm invest. okay i'm okay with uh basic story structure critique okay what's your plot as far as what act one act two act three uh, why would i why on earth would i explain all of that what do you mean like going into the future for ice on one two and three no i'm talking about book one what's the plot like what's the character what, what part do you not understand what, what part what part are you confused on i'll I, I answer any questions that you have but just be direct okay um, mm -hmm. what are Isom's superpowers? He's a superhero. He puts himself in danger. We need to know what kind of super abilities he has to know if he's well, risking do, his do life. You, do you, right. Do you see, do you see, uh, him do anything super in the book? Yeah. He gets thrown down into a car and smashed okay. the shit out of the car. So he seems like a right. superhero. Did, did you, so about the, what about the, you, you remember the guy that he fought San Juan? He fought him twice. Did he do anything super during those, uh, interactions? Yeah, he jumped off a wall and then flipped around in midair and threw him through that same wall. That's pretty okay, super. So, so, so that means that you at least see that he, as far as what his powers are, he's able to do some super things. What you don't know is like the origin of those powers and to what extent. And we'll get to explaining those. Just be patient. It's the first book. Boom. In my opinion, it should be done right fucking there. <laughs> Okay, so he does have superpowers. I mean, yeah, I think you, I think when you fall from as far as he did when he got thrown onto a car, why, why does that Yara, have to be a as well question? as when he jumps off a off a wall and then he jumps into another yeah. except and rams yeah. him into a brick wall and the brick wall breaks. I think it's pretty obvious, and I don't have to hold the uh, person's hand. Um, and explain that to them that he probably has powers because of but regular. Why don't you just say yes then? What's up with this like smug attitude? Why, like, th 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 that's kind well, of been what? my problem this whole time. Like, I gave you very basic notes of 
and and we went through, we went through those notes. We went through those notes no problem. We went through. Yeah, I know you called me a, a ho ass n word while you were going through the notes. I saw that, but yeah, I went through I went through the notes and yeah, we talked about all of that. You called me a scammer, so yeah, that makes you a ho ass nigga because you lying about my business. So we'll get to the scammer thing. Uh, I don't think it's actually fully discussed here, but um. Actually, it does get brought up, so I probably should go through it now. Okay. In all of what's going on with Eric July's success, he works with a charity, and he's made a pledge to... And this gets a little complicated to explain, so forgive me. He's going to make a, a multi-payment donation to this charity on top of giving them copies of Isom at cost for them to sell and it's at a lower a reduced cost so the thing that is changing here and ironically the only person that fucking got this was nick yes that nick nick ricada is that pricing can vary depending on your allotments okay so if you're buying in bulk of say a thousand versus bulk pricing at 10,000 versus bulk pricing at 25,000 that price point can change quite differently so it could be that he initially sent them 10,000 books to send out and build them at a a charge of say $10 a book just to keep things easy right so 10,000 at $10 a book and so, and then he gave them money on top of it. And all he asked was like, hey, just cover the, cover the costs on this, which a lot of charities can do and easily can do. And just sell it and you keep whatever profit. Like, I don't want anything back. Um, and then they worked through that. And as they sold different amounts, he would then send additional money to them on top of it. So it's kind of... Two different donations is what's occurring here. So he basically set it up to where he donated the books at cost. They could sell the books and any money over that they get. As they hit milestones for numbers of books sold, then they will also get additional money sent to them. So after 5,000 books, say they got another $5,000. And then for every... 3,000 books they send get at, send above that, they'll get another $2,500, right? And that's on top of what they're making on top of selling the books and keeping the money. So, realistically, he's donating to the charity. The charity is directly benefiting in a couple different ways. Um, Now, he gets called a scammer because... What happens when they run out of that 10,000 initial allotment, right? Well, maybe they don't think they can sell 10,000 more, right? So now they're going to buy in groups of 1,000. And say for 1,000, these books cost $15 each, right? Well, now they're still going to sell them at whatever price they had. They only got to go through 1,000. Once they get through that 1,000, he'll send more money to you on top of it, whatever. That portion doesn't really matter here what people get caught up on is the fact that he's like i donated say eleven thousand books at 12 oh god you'd have to really crunch the numbers to get down um say let's see a thousand Fifteen dollars a book. I'll do the math on my phone, which is easier, and I don't have to worry about the hotkeys on my stream. So we'll have ten thousand times ten, so hundred thousand, and then we'll have one thousand times fifteen is fifteen thousand. So one hundred and fifteen thousand. Divided by 11,000 total books, right, is $10.45 roughly per book. It's how much 
he's rounding to make it easy for people to understand. It's basically because people want to know, well, how much did you give it? Uh, how much did uh, you charge them for each individual book? Well, if it's kind of like that, where he's paying a different scaling price, so then he's having to change prices to them, then you know what? Like, it's going to change. So, yeah, there's 10,000 books that got donated at $10, but because of that extra 1,000 that were almost 50% higher. <laughs> um, he, uh, his average cost is actually 1050 a book. So that's kind of like what he's trying to explain here. People are calling him a scammer because they're saying, well, you told us that the initial 10,000 books were at $10. How come they're 1050 now? Are you pocketing money from this charity? That's the kind of shit going on here. So that's kind of a real quick ish way of explaining things. Yeah. I do stand by that. I want to be clear now your, that you hear. Your business is marketing anti woke shit to morons. Well, that's, and, and, and you're free to that opinion. I've never marketed anything as such, but you call my business a scam. This is something you said that's you were my livelihood. Dance on the you call my business a scam, artist. and I called you a whole what ass nigga. And now you're hearing me calling you one. And I, I just want to be. Be clear. That's you said you were going to dance on the graves of Marvel and DC comic artists. No, what, what I said, no, 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 no. See, you're getting a saying wrong. At least get it correct if you're going to uh, talk about it. What I'm saying is, I said I would moonwalk on the dead careers of comic pros. Is what I what I said. Well, I, you I heard me say that on your stream as well. You can I say it all the time. Just, what it like? Is this more? This is like the assault thing. Like you get hung up on these really simple details. I can't tell if you're. I can't tell if you genuinely don't understand the point, or if you're just trying to. What, uh, what, what, trying to what point have I not addressed? What, Buddy, what, do you, what you else? You have you want set me to say? yourself up as an alternative to. Oh, other now, now you're mad. Now you're, you're mad. Just calm, calm yes, down. I am. Doing? I am. I am mad because you're okay. lying. You're lying to no, your audience, and you're lying to me. You. Right. That's the thing, Belinda. Is it's not pocketed. He's not actually pocketing any money. It's just that people can't understand the cost of the diminished quantities that are being ordered are going to be at a higher cost. So then you're, it raises the cost on all the books overall. So they're not looking at, well, you just got a thousand books at 1050 average. They're looking at it as, well, you only charge them $10 a book for the first 10,000. How come now it's suddenly gone up in price? That's like one big question coming out of this. And it's just a matter of tiered pricing, which is an industry thing. Like, don't get me wrong. I worked with tier pricing. I've set up tier pricing. Tier pricing can happen at different quantity breaks. It could be 500s. It could be 250s. I mean, it could go by the pallet. And, you know, it could go by the truckload even. It could be, it's going to be significantly cheaper for him to um, take and... Uh, send bulk trucks than a less than load which is literally meaning less than a full trailer right because then a, a logistics place has to make up that room so now they have to find freight that's going to fit in there so they're going to charge you a higher rate just in case they can't find something so like there's all these little price increases all the way across the board depending on different things yeah exactly buying a gram to an ounce like yeah yeah, I mean, if, you, if you're perpetually buying ounces, like, it's going to be significantly cheaper, even though you're spending more. But then, say, you buy an ounce and then you just keep capping off that ounce with a gram or two grams. Every time you use two grams, you're coming back. You're buying two grams. You're actually spending more, so then your whole overall average for grams is higher. It's still probably cheaper than if you had bought just the grams from the start, but it's higher than the price that you bought uh, at the ounces. Set right, what have I lied about? Yourself up as an as an upcoming alternative to mainstream mm -hmm. comics, and that buying your shitty book for forty bucks would somehow strike a blow into Marvel and DC well, comics. Well, I think I think you're false? being disingenuous. I'll is explain exactly what the point of my. I'll explain exactly what the point is. Am I am I a competitor? Yes. I have three principles not with the Riververse. Book, you're not. All right, well, that's fine. You, you're free to that opinion. Um, nonetheless, I have three principles. We have that over there at the Riververse Ethics. 
And one of those, of course, there are people that have issue. I've griped and moaned about the mainstream and I've talked about it extensively about my my certain issues. And I went through every bit of that and building my actual actual company. So to those people, yes, they may find that my company and the books that we make and we put out or release, publish, whatever you want to call it, the books that we put out, they might enjoy that. This idea that I'm going to topple, I believe you said that to me in a tweet, something about toppling Hollywood. That's not every, anything that I've ever presented to do. Yeah, I'm I mean, not that's a euphemism because Hollywood is all Marvel now. Like Hollywood is comic okay. books right now. So well, saying I'm, you're challenging I'm, mainstream I'm comics is saying like, I'm going to challenge Hollywood. Like, I don't no, understand why you're taking issue no, with something no, that is like a no, fine. That, that's a big leap, in my opinion, for him to take to say that just because you're saying you're challenging this industry now means you're challenging an industry as a whole. While I can this is one of those points where like i can say that yeah i understand where dax is coming from because they're one in the same mostly um they're not because you still have bunch of like fuck even dc like as many dc's movies as there are you couldn't even really say that dc has taken hollywood so there's a direct competitor to Marvel that is a large presence in the comic industry that is not necessarily a large presence in the Hollywood side. So you can't directly equate that comics equal Hollywood. Because not all comics equal Hollywood. Not even all major comics equal Hollywood. That, that's not that's it's not really totally my fine approach. to say you're challenging Hollywood. I don't know no, why no, you're no, not. No, that's, that, that's cool. That's inaccurate, though. That's fine. That's inaccurate. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was exactly what they used, Jim. <laughs> Except they were, they bought probably an ounce and then were topping it up with eight balls. So it became a little more complex because they were still buying at a markedly lower price than a gram, but a higher price than an ounce. So again, tiered pricing split they were at a middle tier versus the extreme high tier, which would be the least quantity, the lowest or most quantity would be the lowest price. Well, so no. how, so do your customers think that, that you're challenging Hollywood? Like, I don't know. I, I, I don't, you, I've I don't never, know I'm going to be honest. You're one of the few people that have, I've ever heard worded as such, as far as like toppling Hollywood. Like I've never, as far as I understand Belinda, no, no, he's wanting to, in my opinion, and, they're really misconstruing the fact that he's saying he wanted to disrupt mainstream comics with his comic. He wanted to show that an indie comic literally starting at nothing could come in, disrupt, and be as profitable as some newly started mainstream comic title. So like if, if Marvel created a character right now and started a comic series for that character. Just call him Character X. And Eric July starts his Isom books. He is as powerful or as profitable as that individual line. He's not... I don't even think he's saying that in his current position. He's uh, a direct threat necessarily even to Marvel or DC. He's their competition, and he's trying to be strong competition. And his hope, I think, I think, and this is a big interpretation on my end, I think his hope is, is to show enough interest in a different portion of the market to maybe drag some of the more mainstream comics into producing in that same way. Ideally, I think he's in... in in a roundabout way, he could technically make himself go out of business by drawing enough uh, eyes on him being a hot thing. It would obviously take a markedly long time, but I never even presented myself as if I was going to do that. Now, okay, if so they feel that way, on? thankfully, but I'm going to need a lot more than three point seven million dollars to do that. Well, you're going to need a good story and you don't have one. And that's fine. And you you're don't, free to, you I, don't I even disagree. understand you, you what's wrong with position. your story. See, the, your your main. And just to give an idea, I want to see, like, what are... Let's go top five.
See, I think he would probably be, instead of like comparing him to a Marvel or a DC comics, he would probably be more on point with this is his goal. He wants to be an image. He wants to be a dark horse. Um, he wants to be, oh God, some of these I don't even know. I have no idea about Oni. Archie's its own line. Like maybe a boom. I mean, he wants to be a part of the presence. Maybe not as large of a market share as Marvel. Maybe not as large of a market share as even DC. But he wants to work his way up to show that there is an interest in this and you guys abused an audience by not supplying to that audience. Character has no motivation. He's doing a wellness check on a girl that's the daughter of a friend of a family that goes to church. And then when he finds that girl, she doesn't even say she's in trouble. Your entire it's plot almost, revolves- It's almost as if there's going to be more. That's not a plot hole. It's all, almost no, as it's if there's no more plot. to it. It's not a plot hole. It's no plot. Well, there no, is no plot. reason it, for plot. him to be involved at all. She's not okay. in trouble. She okay. doesn't say she's in trouble. Right. There's no indication she's in trouble. Your right. plot right. is literally nothing. Okay. So and uh, to add on to what you're saying there, Jim, I, I think a lot of it comes from like there's uh, there's a a lower point that I haven't really talked about that was kind of. OK, so if you're I'm going to have to really kind of go a little off topic here, but if you're starting a business, the big thing you want to do with a business is identify a pain point, a pain point for a customer base that you think you could turn profitable. Okay. So if people, if you're, uh, in a small roadside town, right. And the next nearest town is 30 miles that way and 40 miles that way. That means in a 70 mile stretch, you're the only place that might have a roadside, uh, service for fixing cars and, or maybe a gas station, like ideally, right. Cause if people forget here, are they going to make it to here? No, probably not. Um, so that's a pain point is that people perpetually now are running out of gas on this 70 mile stretch of road. And your idea is I'm going to go create a gas station and put a gas station in the middle of this. So now I'm 30 miles from the longest stretch and theoretically, you know, decrease pain points, but then also be successful on my own. Right. So his pain points that he identified in the market were there's a big influx lately of left leaning politics. And that specifically, and I hate that this is wrapped up in politics. This goes into me being more centralist libertarian that, uh, sexual identity is wrapped into politics, right? So with that left leaning to appeal to the left market for whatever reason, probably because most of the left market is going to be your younger portion of the market where your right is going to be your more established people who are business owners, uh, own assets, things like that. Just traditionally, that's what you have. So in order to appeal to this left side, they've now started to bring in a lot more uh, diversity and inclusiveness stuff. The DEI, I'm sure you've heard of. And, you know, that's where, like, Sweet Baby Inc., right? Things like that are becoming more the norm to make inclusivity. Like, uh, you know, it, it, when coming and bringing this back to comics, right? There are certain things, like, when you're watching the Marvel movies, right? Uh, Captain America is going to be black when you're watching the, you know where Captain America hands off his shield. The next Captain America in your mind, theoretically then is going to be black. You know, Miles Morales is going to take over for, uh, uh, Peter Parker for Spider-Man. Um, uh, and like these are, these are easily progressible things, but now they're also doing things such as, well, Superman's gay. Why? He never was before. Well, because that's what we want to do now. And it's because it, it draws more people from this market. 
that's all they're doing it for it's that it's that identity capitalism is kind of really what it comes down to just appealing like look at how many companies this month are going to have rainbow logos and everything else and they're appealing to that identity capitalism of pride month ironically while not doing so in countries like dubai and qatar and all that where being gay is <laughs> uh so it's just it's an identity capitalism thing it's it's these people don't believe this year round they're just doing it to market it to an audience to then bring that group to pay more money to that company to make that company more wealthy so and that's where he's sick of it he's like well if we're going to do that i'm going to do the opposite he's like i'm going to have a strong uh cisgender straight male character and you know although he's african-american like he's not he's not gay just to be fed into this he he has an identity that's that's what he's doing here sorry i had to fix my phone it was flashing out of the corner of my eye and bothering the hell out of me um are you done you done okay <laughs> yeah rainbow marketing that's that's another name for it many creative types are also left-leaning i really don't think all the inclusivity bs is by design no i mean what um what there what what i was kind of getting around to with uh miles morales taking over for peter parker and you know um uh captain america being black is those are transferable things that is now a new character and for most people in these markets they don't care about that honestly they don't like regardless of political sphere like yeah you could say okay well they're doing it because but if if captain america as illustrated in like the movies and such if his closest friend is black and that's who he deems worthy based on values to transfer the role to captain america can become black like it's it's not tied to that where captain america or superman and lois lane like that's a thing that's been a big thing and uh clark kent and all that has been a big portion of the storyline to then say well superman's gay now is a very big crux and a very big knife in the side to a lot of these people that care about these characters now you might find that ridiculous in its own and you can it's the same ridiculousness that goes with a lot of this stuff as far as like they're fictional characters who gives a fuck but that's the knife in the side that they don't care for while they don't mind something more transferable and organic so so do you not know why did why did uh, i'm gonna ask you this question since you supposedly read it why did isom go back to the club after he was thrown out the first time because he was disrespected because he's a standard okay, so for you, you just said, and the you only just thing you care had, about he, is being disrespected okay, so, you, so you just said <laughs> that he had no motivations and you just named one but that's like a, that's not a good motivation for a right, hero. If you don't man. like that's like that, a motivation for a if you don't like that, if you don't like that as a motivation for why he was really driven to go back to that club, I'm perfectly fine with that. I just disagree. Yeah, but it also doesn't it also doesn't flow from the first motivation. Like your first motivation should be enough to start the story, and then. And you know, Jim, that that plays into a whole nother portion of this where you're talking about um, sentimentality of a role. Which, you know, again, fills into that thing like, uh, I mean, you can develop new characters. Like, uh, there was a Superman son at one point, and Superman's son, from what I understand, was gay. Like, that was his sexual orientation. Um, you know, that's not even, that that totally devoids the sentimentality because you have no establishment for this character other than yeah great you know all american uh couple and now the son is gay cool whatever um 
but it's very different. Yeah, when you get into things like taking a legacy character that's had a known established history and changing it, I think that's a bigger knife in the side versus, say, even again, it's just, it's a knife in the side, so to speak. But I feel like there's a larger population that doesn't necessarily give a crap. But then there's also going to be a stronger population that's good. Nostalgia, nostalgia, nostalgia. So. Took over that man. <laughs> thank you only 10 for correcting me on that it's some of this stuff like i know i know the basic concepts of the story so i do appreciate you uh uh correcting me on that because i didn't know it was technically clark kent's son that's gay and then probably with the death of Superman, he takes up the mantle of Superman. That makes sense. As it evolves during the story, it should become more personal to the hero. Well, Yours that's exactly what evolve. happened. That's it's literally what happened with the disrespect. It's totally that's, different. It's no, out that, of no, nowhere all right. that so, he's all right. so that's literally what happened. All right, I'm going to explain it to you. He first went, he first went, and he, again, you're free to disagree with that and not like it. I'm okay with that. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. The, he, he first went to see what's up with Jasmine upon the request of his sister. Right. He goes and sees he goes and sees her. Something happens out of that. And he specifically makes it personal right to him as far. As, and he goes through the internal dialogue as far as why he's one duty. He talks about him not being a detective. He talks about the fact that this could make the issue issue worse. But I actually want to punch this guy in his face. He discusses each and every bit of that during the internal dialogue. You're saying, I guess, that motivation for him doing that, because I guess he has flaws and all that, is not good enough for you for the first book? That's fine with me. I just yeah, disagree. I'm, I'm saying it's not good, and that if you want to be a comic writer, you should and, and learn I, what makes I dis good I, motivation. I disagree. I, I disagree. I think, well, but that's I think, the problem. Is you're a beginner. You don't know shit about well, this, that, and you again, disagree again, with everything. Again, I can disagree with your position, but there are people that have the complete opposite position, and your word isn't gospel. That yeah, might... your friends who want to suck your ass so they can get access okay. to all and, that and, money and that's in your cool audience. That, that's cool with me. Don't disrespect. You don't have to disrespect my customers there, but there are people no, that they have, have the money. Complete... I'm disrespecting your friends. No, no, I don't. I don't have that many. Hey. I don't have forty thousand friends. I don't have forty thousand friends. By the way, um, nonetheless, you don't have to disrespect my customers. I'm not, and, and that's cool. That's cool. If you don't I'm disrespecting like the story, your friends. If I don't have again, don't have forty thousand friends. But if you don't like the story, no, that's your business. I'm disrespecting your friends that are telling you you're doing a good job. All right, that's cool. That's cool, and that, that, that's fine. That's your business. Do you not understand? Like, do you not think that you could get better by listening yes. to some of these notes? Like, Absolutely. do you not, not understand? To this? yours, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be completely honest. To yours, no. Um, but there are people yeah. that I can listen to whose opinion that I value. It's just not yours. Yeah. Okay. Um. So you think your story was good? Yep. What cliffhanger did it end on your book? The big did, buy the second. <laughs> yes, I read. I don't know why you're telling people I didn't read the book when I took like exhaustive no notes on. Yeah, I know. I, I, you got some things fundamentally wrong, and that's why I thought that you hey, maybe didn't read it, or maybe you was reading just, from someone like, else's notes. I think you're. I don't know if you're like weirdly obsessively fixated on lines that I wrote while I was reading, so I could remember later. But it's or if you're like disingenuously misrepresenting the oh, notes like, that like I gave you, did, you. Like you did my book. Like you did my book. Like no, you did some I, I of the events in my book. I think your book is a story failure. I and that's fine. That's fine. Failure. But, you, but you, that's not you, misrepresenting it. Well, no, misrepresenting would be like claiming that someone assaulted someone where they didn't. That would be misrepresenting. Nah, putting if you don't know if somebody's a good hey, uh, if a big black guy on the street grabs a girl, that's assault in my book. And if she doesn't say, like, oh, yeah, hey, how are you? That's assault. Okay, all right. So, putting the shoulder, putting his hand on the shoulder of someone saying, hey, let me know if this is involuntary to you is, uh, is assault. All right, I for sure won't be listening to anything you I have. I mean, to it's say. like it's a joke that I'm, I mean, I'm writing these notes for myself, so I. See, this is one thing I also have a problem with with uh, Dick Masterson is he's trying to he's trying to imply that 
very, very, very obtusely that you cannot have even nonverbal contact in the real world, regardless of all this fantastical setup. Because, like, if I put my hand on someone's shoulder, that's assault. Well, yeah, I mean, technically, yes, you can go through and you can bring that all the way to the courts and see how far it goes with a judge. I, I kind of guarantee you're not going to go very far. I'll be honest with you. Because most judges are going to be like, did he hit you? Did he spit on you? No, just put his hand on my shoulder. I didn't like it. Did you tell him to stop? No. Okay. Thank you, Melinda. Who cares? Like, why are we applying this minutia to a comic? Like, I really, I really, what happens? So is Vito's character, if Vito's character in this fantasy concept kills anybody, like you guys are insinuating in chat, in the first book, he should go to jail for murder. Done. Vito's going to end with one book if if any murder is committed. Otherwise, he's going to be a, a fugitive of the law in the rest of the comic. And then is he going to do the right thing and turn himself in for a life imprisonment later on? Come on. I remember it's it's not a major thing but right. it's, that, I saw cool. him cool. I saw cool. him grabs cool. Jasmine's shoulder and then the security guard grabs his shoulder and he goes who are you to just grab somebody's shoulder like he just did that in the panel right before it no you no he, no, no, no what no what he what he said was that was this why is this your first instinct because he told him obviously in an aggressive way which is the complete opposite of what I some did you see that he's grabbing him in the way that he did and he uses that to justify whooping the guy's ass yeah. and then he walks in the club and the other thing that you misrepresented which is hilarious where you you try to give me advice but the actual advice that you were talking about this earlier the actual advice that you give me there is exactly what happened where you say what he should have did was go in there run run it run in the uh club warn everybody and then get attacked and that's exactly what happened yet you said that's what i should have done i mean you're you're hung up with like small uh, see now, details see now I'm hung that up. I would so, so you mentioned something that you say. No, 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 no. I support that, but it's just all right, not important. Cool. I, I support right, that right, it's just a waste yeah. of everybody's time. Like that, he, that's fine. I that's comes cool, in man. and says, "Ladies, if you get, if uh, you better leave, because if you get involved, I'm gonna beat your ass too." That's not a very heroic thing to say. That's what the bad guy in fucking RoboCop said, dude. Like I know you have no memory, no working memory of other properties. That's why your book sucks so much. But that's what bad guys say. Anything, anything else you wanna? hero thing though dick like that's one of the things that i don't understand that you think that the, he's supposed to be a superhero i don't think he was represented as a superhero in the book at all he was represented as a guy with powers we don't actually know if he's a super quote-unquote hero yet or right not. right right he still we has know, to be a protagonist which means he, he has to be identifiable he has but, to be identified but we he have was. to identify with what he's doing walking he in well, then what did you identify with, with Nina? What was the it is, to you? It is a superhero book, though. So I think most people going into this assume the character has powers. Yeah. Why is I mean, it just a weird the debate? Cover, dude. It's on the cover. Like, he's he's a powered dude that's, that's fucking punching this chick. Like, I don't. I mean, I don't have an encyclopedic there's... knowledge of Wait, comics, but I'm pretty that, sure there's could... a Batman comic that where you... a, a guy is punching. What? Just just off of the book alone, you can assume he has some kind of enhanced strength and like flight, like that or flight? high agility. There's there's artwork of him out there like doing some flying. I just know no, what I read fly. in the book. He does some agility stuff. Like he hovering. Doesn't, he, doesn't oh, he doesn't fly. Okay. See, all this stuff, Eric, is good to get out of the way in the in the introduction of it your book. It says in the it's book a, he, he doesn't fly. He explicitly fly. says it in the book. Yeah. He explicitly says it. Flash, did you he read goes it? through that internal dialogue. He literally says in the book so, that see, he this is what lie. I'm talking about with you not being in good faith because you can't get fundamental things correct because you're so mad at you so for what do you kind of get where this is going it's gonna proceed and I'm playing this out because this is one of the longer streams we got a bunch of tiny 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 stuff later on uh, I'm pro this stream will end early sorry Belinda uh but this de-escalates a lot um i don't know if they get into the full side tangent argument which i'm kind of interested in because i threw another video in there in case they do
whatever reason angry at myself and the success it is that we saw and you just shitting on people's friends and, and customers all. and all and going on about this it. other stuff and and you can't even know. get fundamental thing wrong he specifically goes through internal dialogue about him not being able to fly you claim to have read the book and you couldn't I even didn't think he, he could fly until flash said he could fly well, you just, flash, you you just no you just fly. tried to let him hold on hold on hold on when there was the hold material on. To promote the book, there was hold something up. out there that looked like he was doing like a hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, he he's truly the most uh, obtuse of people, Ellington. The most. He has literally come full circle and has been making the second pass of obtuseness. I don't even know if that's a word I may have just made up. Flash, so you thought he could fly, right? Okay. So you said you read no the book, answer. right? No answer. No fucking yeah, no. answer. Every yeah, time but... I ask anything about ISOM, okay. no fucking okay. answer because none right, of you guys right. read you, this piece you said of you shit. read the book, right, homie? You, you said you read the book, right, homie? So why would you try to lecture me on some things that we should go through when he specifically goes through that internal dialogue? I didn't say he could fly, you jackass flash. No, that's not what I'm saying. Uh, all right, all right. Yeah, so, fair, I read the book. You just, it, you just said, book no, no, no. What you just here. said, what you just went on, now, now you're very angry, and that, that's cool, but you just calm the fuck down. Eh? You ain't, ain't going to do you shit. You won't be as angry you're, as I was. You're, you're, you're not going to do shit to, you're not gonna do shit to anybody. Anyway, like, like I was one, saying, bitch. you tried to lecture me. You tried to lecture me about uh, going through, like, why I should have went through something, and then what you specifically are referring to I actually went through it in the book. This you get this critical error wrong what are you multiple about? times. Multiple what are you times. About? He goes through the internal right dialogue of him not being able to fly. Yeah. You just I, tried to let Eric, we I need to rewind that. Fly, you stupid fuck. Flash you just that. went through no, Flash you just said he could fly. I said right, he could so fly. So you just said you just said this is something that I should have went through. I'm trying to explain Eric is right here, by the way. When you're listening to this actual fucking argument. Dick, again, I'm going to sum this up really quick. Dick says to Eric, you have big issues with your comic. Eric goes, what? He goes, well, you should have laid things out better and laid out that he had superpowers. And Eric goes and says, well, I did. And he goes, did you not read the book? Dick, yes, I read the book. And then at some point in all of this back and forth discussing the different superpowers, Flash chimes in and says, yeah, he can kind of fly. And Eric corrects him and goes, no, he can't fly. He actually addresses that in his internal monologue, which is something that Dick goes, oh, so he can't fly. That would have been nice to know going in. Literally, Eric, in the following up of that, says he handled that in the monologue. So automatic fucking win here like to eric he's saying unless you can bring up proof at this point in his dick and say no he doesn't he doesn't or maybe you're trying to argue that he doesn't do it clear enough i don't fucking know but like the argument that you're picking right now is losing Explain. I don't know if we need to rewind it i don't know if the acoustics is bad well, flash, where, you where you're nice sitting. what i'm saying is well, you just I, tried I to it. let I, me about on. it. I read it when it came out, so it's been a long time since you I tried this, to let this fucking monologue is and aimed at you, Flash. I don't know. I knew he couldn't fly. No, you said you, he no, could. You, you just you just said that this no. was something that I you tried to lecture me of. This is something that I should have gone through. Did you not just say that? Yeah, because Flash the, didn't get it. Okay, so, so if he didn't get it, it. Uh, uh, you can't lecture me about something that I actually went through. If you want to say that that's a failure on Flash's comprehension or something, that's fine. Yeah, but I'm I talking mean, about dude, what you just said. Yeah, it was kind of a joke at Flash's expense. Like the the, the overall point is that your story sucks. It's there's no. There's All right, no, that's that's cool. That, that's cool. All right, I, 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 I you understand. Don't, you, know, you don't explain. I understand. Why I, I understand that you don't like the you story. Don't give these I'm okay with that. Emotional moments in the book that you need to have a good story. They That's are cool. totally I thought absent. they had an emotional moment in okay. the book when he was talking to his uh, niece. I thought that was emotional. I liked it. I like yeah. that part. So I like I understand one of your criticisms that I thought I agreed with was the hook because I thought that the hook could have been stronger in the sense of him going out to look. I'm starting to strongly wonder if he has didn't just put a picture up for this i don't think i've even seen him do any movement he may be dead unfortunately he isn't but he may have been for the the girl to begin with but otherwise like otherwise dick 
your criticisms have been very hollow. Like you're nitpicking at very, very specific things that have actually been explained in the book, like this flying situation that you just talked about. Yeah. yeah or yeah. like somehow you have a bleeding heart for women all of a sudden, and then black man approaching a wo woman in the in the street is apparently well, assault I made now. A, I made a joke uh, about but, that being assault. Like that's a, you understand that the no. This is where Nick must get his humor because that was did not read as a joke at all to me. Like, you know, it might be that full hard troll to where it's like, oh, I'm supposed to laugh because I'm supposed to in that moment see him being, huh, ah, it's a joke. Notes are just like a running dialogue that I have while I'm reading the book. I, I understand that and then the, the big the big description of why the story does not work and where it can be imp improved is the point. You guys are focused on these little details and observations I made you're at the top. Cons you're specifically hung up on little details. You're saying you need to tell me every single. She doesn't articulate it well, but she's on a good point here, Nina. And this is one of the very few times you'll see me agree, but she's on to a good point here his whole argument is minutia single detail of every single power that he has why isn't he flying no what i would like strength? any what any is indication this? Of and the he's powers, saying just anything. wait i'll tell you the origin story at some point and you're saying that's not good enough for a first issue that you have no fucking plot that you have no story that's not the case because a lot of people enjoyed the story like i did i enjoyed the story i read it it was good that's good. good that's start. that's good oh ellington i'll let jim explain some of it but i do want to eventually cover the maddox thing because that's a whole he basically he uh he has his own montograph <laughs> i'm glad you enjoyed it my point was this is why the story is not good dick the problem is, is the problem is that you attacked his business first yeah. And that's why he's not listening to you. The, the reason why he's not receptive to what you have to say is because you attacked his business first and foremost. And then you went ahead and, and you know, gave your notes about the book. And well, so he's he's mad because you called him a scammer and you, yeah. you attacked the, the woke thing. Uh, yeah. And, you know, you do that and you're going to shut somebody down and they're not going to listen to you. And, and that's why he's, uh, you know, not receptive to your notes at all and, and doesn't give a shit what you have to say. And that's that the situation makes sense. that we find ourselves in right now. So he doesn't I'm, want to hear you. And that's, no, no, that's I, I, I understand. And I thank you for letting me on. Um, I defended Eric's marketing for a year leading up to this final note taking, n leading up to actually reading it. And uh, welcome, I'm pro. <laughs> I'm th yeah, thank you. I'm pro marketing. I think the marketing is a great is great. I think the mark the marketing you did, Eric, was a huge success. Um, and and, and I, thought, I thought it was great that you could, as I explained to Vito, I thought it was great that you told a story where people could spend money and feel good about what they were spending the money on. And that was what I thought the book was. That's what it represented to people who bought it. I think they bought it as a trophy to have, and that was a good thing to me. But as soon as it turned into the book is a financial marketing success to equals it's a creative success, I said, well, that's not true. The creative part is not there, and this is what could be changed. And I believe strongly that those two are separate things. And after that, it turned into a very petty and very childish flame war between us. And that's no, there's where no it flame is. War. No, 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 no. That's not what happened. There's no flame war between you. Like you came in with the, with the energy that you came in with. This is something that you take issue with what it is that I do. This is not the other way around. I'm going to be completely honest. I don't know. Other than the fact that you haven't accomplished anything in the space it is that I'm that I'm actually in, I don't know anything about you like that. And quite frankly, I don't care. It's not important by any means. Like I said, it's not like you have some sort of sense of accomplishment that would make your opinion of me or even my product that valuable like that. You've already like, like to Ethan's point, you went off the rip calling me a scammer, right? You, 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 you basically advocated piracy of my own product. So me, you essentially are knocking me and that's cool. Like I said, that's cool with me that, that you're knocking me. However, I'm just not going to be listening to you of all people. And that's it. This isn't a feud. This isn't a me against you. I don't know. This is you went after me. I don't know you like that. I'm not reviewing your stuff. I don't care to review your stuff. I don't know you like that. 
So it's not a feud by any means. You just took issue with it, and I'm cool with that. You don't like the story. You think the book sucks. Fine with me. We went through your criticism. Consider it a criticism of your criticism. I felt it largely lousy, pathetic. It uh, didn't make a whole lot of sense in the context of actually reading the book. And it certainly didn't read like someone, as far as the actual write-up, like someone that even bothered to actually read it. But you claim you did. Cool. Either way, either way, you can you are free to dislike it and i'm free to reject your position on this what i'm saying is your position ain't gospel right so if you don't think it's a creative success fine if you don't think it had a, a good enough story you thought it sucked you thought it was trash we all good over here homie other people don't feel that way there are other people that like the book we talk about it all the time on my stream they have no issues with the motivation they're they're excited about some of these characters it is that i've created your position or your opinion of me is not gospel you are not the beacon of truth you are not the person that is all ever knowing you possess the knowledge to understand because you again being the beacon of truth you understand that this sucks or it doesn't that's not how it works you're just a dude with an opinion and that's cool with me. I look forward to review. I think that was so well done. That to me, this to me is more blood sports than some of the shit that you see labeled as blood sports anymore. This is a articulate side to side argument. I mean, there's a couple points where you get a little jumbled back and forth, but this is an otherwise an articulate even though I don't agree with Dick's points, he is articulating them well. Uh, side to side argument. And mind you, there's a bunch of people here and they're all minding to be respectful too. Viewing ISOM too. Sweet. Sounds good. Hopefully you buy it this time, you cheapskate. No, I don't buy <laughs> media. <laughs> Didn't I miss it? I, I only wanted a PDF because I thought You're I couldn't terrible. buy it. <laughs> Get on ripperverse.com, Dick. Get get out of here. With you, owe him a, you, you owe him a go. Superkiller.org to buy Vito's comic and compare the two. That's where, right, Nina? I know I'm going to send you a copy of Superkiller. Good killer. Lord, please don't. You can oh, goody. Oh, goody. We get into an argument here. I thought it ended before this. I couldn't really gauge how long the argument was because this came out of a stream that is an hour and a half long so i knew it contained a good chunk of the information but i couldn't really gauge how much of it was going to be just the uh just <laughs> thank you for catching that Ellington. <laughs> what was going to be just the argument with dick and uh eric i threw this in here so that like people can get kind of like an independent like veto independently from dick his perspective on shit and then I have one of Dick, well, you just saw Dick independent of Vito. Online, just causing problems, fighting. And <laughs> the world the world of comic books, I'm, I, I'm, yeah. I'm nothing. I've never read a comic book. Like, my, my friend groups growing up, nobody had comic books. It's like a, a blind spot of my whole childhood. And so I had a fun time watching you and Dick kind of tear down this this comic that that you guys have all been poking fun at online can you give us a, a background of what that was about yeah i'll give it to you so one one topic that comes up on our show a lot is this whole idea of woke marketing versus anti-woke marketing so you know the left started off and they're like look skittles are gay now buy some gay skittles now i go to target buy a bunch of gay okay which is we all know it's like a little obnoxious it's like yeah okay do you guys really care about gay people or are you just trying to make money is this just marketing mm. you know whatever you can argue it up and down sure. But then we started getting into the anti-woke marketing, where we now see, you know, like, hey, did you hear Hershey's chocolate bars are gay? And then Daily Wire goes, buy our anti-woke chocolate bar, the only chocolate bar that doesn't have pronouns, bro. And it's yeah. like 50 bucks for a chocolate bar. <laughs> 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 and we're like, this is the same grift. They're doing the same thing. They're just doing it in reverse. It's not marketing a product based on the quality of the product as we should want to buy quality products but instead like hey if you buy this you're winning an ideological political war yeah. against your enemies it's high school the, 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 <laughs> the official the official candy bar of the kkk right <laughs> like it's high school I, all over again it's high school we've all got to wear the right brand 
dude. Yeah. We, you, you all got to support. Jinko jeans. Mm-hmm. You, Why did you, you sit on that side of the room? Yeah, Damn, finger on the pulse. Kyle. <laughs> this snake yeah. sale supports the uh, junior girls varsity, and if you don't buy this brownie, yep. you basically hate our school. Yeah, it's that. Yeah. It's tribalism being entered into into you know products, which is silly. And if you're an adult, you should just buy the best one you can get for your money. Yeah. You shouldn't really care. Did Bud Light put a gay person on the can? Okay, well, if you like drinking Bud Light, I don't know why you liked it to begin with, but that should not really influence your beer purchasing decision. What does? My argument. What does and what should? Because I'll give you an example. Calories. I do yeah. buy the, I always bought the Dolphin Safe Tuna. Now, I don't think there's Dolphin Danger Tuna anymore, but like back in the day, I guess there was. Yeah. But any, and any product that says they'll donate to animals or uh, or something like that, I'll buy. But if it's like, a, if, the, if Pringles is like Ten percent of your fucking money goes to a, a heroin addict. I'm I'm switching to Lay's. Like like I, I am gonna sp- <laughs> I'm gonna speak with my dollar to some extent in this ca- pseudo capitalistic market we're in. Yeah, like, support does mean little to me. I, I was thinking about it. Yeah. Like when I was in high school, I was really into cycling. You know, I had that. I, I rode mm-hmm. like 250 miles a week, and I had the tight clothes and all the thing. And I was gay. So, uh, if it's like it's a super unpopular sport, it's way more popular to make fun of cycling than to actually ride your bike. I check true. And uh, <laughs> so the rare company that like actually sponsored Lance Armstrong or whatever, Greg LeMond back at the time, I'd be like, all right, you know, that's the freaking protein bar that I want to eat because they mm. support my unpopular sport. Yeah. And in the opposite, uh, <laughs> I was into off roading a lot in like my 30s, and. Uh, Companies that would like support shutting down off road trails and keeping four by fours out of the desert or whatever, I would boycott them because they're boycotting me. Like they're trying to shut down my hobby. So I'm not going to send my money to you. Yeah. So, uh, I'm a little bit. Yeah. No, I totally get it. And I, I totally understand the idea of wanting to try and exist ethically under capitalism as hard as that is and with the interweaving web of child labor and whatever the hell else. The problem is when you are willing to accept what is clearly an inferior or overpriced product merely mm. for the sake of making mm. a political stance. Like if there's two mm. chocolate bars, they each cost a dollar. One of them gives money to orphans. The other one gives money to robot Hitler. I go, okay, I'll buy the orphan chocolate bar. I get it. Like that's yeah. an easy mm-hmm. choice. The problem is when it, it's, you know, the dollar chocolate bar that maybe, I don't know, either is given a nickel to gay people or whatever, or the, you know, again, $20 chocolate bar that, I, I don't know, is going to some guy at the Daily Wire. Gives $18 dollars to Ben Shapiro. <laughs> yeah, gives $18 to Ben Shapiro, and, who's already a multimillionaire and doesn't need it. I'd go, you know what, I'm just going to buy the dollar chocolate bar. Well, it's I mean, stupid for me to pay for something. I'm not going to get extra argument. quality, and I'm buying it. I mean, not only is he being hypocritical with how he's dealing with Eric July, because that could be seen as tribalism, too. Yeah. But as far as like companies doing this, they're only paying lip service. The yeah. problem with that is, is like, I mean, do they play these same fucking commercials in fucking Afghanistan and whatnot? I doubt it. Yeah. Like, and- we've seen it with game companies changing their logos during Pride Month and like all the countries that accept uh, the LGBTQ community versus like all the other uh, countries that don't. Yeah. So it's like, like Abu Dhabi and all. Our, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's an insult to our intelligence, and if you're going to be dealing with us that way and try to pretend that you're, you know, in support of something when you're clearly just trying to make more money, why wouldn't you go with someone who's just being blatantly upfront with their politics? Yeah. I mean, that's. I mean, he'll say that's fucking retarded and a, a, a disingenuous way to look at it. But that is how people look at it who know the stakes of the game, who are actually smart. And I don't think people gave up Bud Light because they put um, Dylan Mulvaney on the fucking can just because they were trans. They actually get into that exact argument. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's like I never drank Bud Light, but I know a lot of people gave it up because of that fucking marketing. Because it's like, look, beer is beer. It doesn't have to be political. Yeah. I mean, that's the one thing. It's just like, there are, it's like, if we're going into the game of playing politics, then I'm going to switch to a different beer that's going to align with my politics. Yeah. It's like, it's, it, it, Vito wants to put it on the people who fired the second shot rather than the people who fired the first shot. Mm hmm. That, that's what it boils down to in Vito's position and how he thinks. What's really funny is, uh, I think Kyle and Woody are the ones they really have him end up walking back to the point he's like, these are bad analogies. The same analogies he's going to use for like the next like three minutes, he'll end up walking back almost entirely. And it just shows that he's a baseless, like he doesn't even believe in what he's saying. And in what he's saying, he doesn't have a strong foundation of his argument. It's just so much bullshit. 
I mean, just if like he understood blood. like human psychology a little bit better and was being a bit more honest, he'd understand why his arguments make no fucking sense and he wouldn't make them in the first place. True. You know what? I'm just going to buy the dollar chocolate bar. It's stupid for me to pay for something. If I'm not going to get extra quality and I'm buying it just yeah. to make a political statement. Yeah. So the way that enters into comics is there is a gentleman, a YouTuber named Eric July. You may be aware of him. He's a libertarian influencer, an African-American gentleman. A uh, large, large uh, bodybuilder kind of guy. He okay. works out, uh, and he uh, wanted. He, he said, "I'm going to make a comic book, right?" Now I have my own uh, personal beef with this guy. I don't like some of his politics, so, so I was naturally skeptical. I'm like, "Is this guy a writer?" He's one of these guys who every day is making videos. By the way, this is the video that made me think that all of this stems from Vito, because there's no mention of Dick till later. I don't like some of his politics. So, so I was naturally skeptical. I'm like, is this guy a writer? He's one of these guys who every day is making videos about the reason the Marvel movies suck is they're woke. And the reason that the comic books suck is they're woke. And the reason blah, 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 blah. And me as a writer, I go, that's part of the problem. It's not the entire problem. There's a lot of problems going on in entertainment right now. And a lot of guys have dialed it down to, if you just take the politics out, everything gets good. And I go, no, that's not the solution. Mm -hmm. There is some of that, but if that's all you can talk about, frankly, you have no business critiquing well, writing I mean, or media. He's Thank kind you. of right on this point. It's just that he's not giving a specific uh, degree of what woke plays into it. Yeah. Two woke is like one third of the problem. The other two thirds is fucking burnout. And the idea it's like shitty writing. Yeah. And I would even go and say there's also an oversaturation of it. It's yeah, not like. It... Be... But it's just like when you're looking at a specific movie, like it's burnout which would be the oversaturation part of it yeah bad writing and the woke politics being infused because hollywood yep so this guy goes i'm gonna make a comic book and i go well in my head this guy's a big dummy who seems to th and you know of course he's promising this is going to be a non-political comic it's not gonna have any politics in it and you know he works for the blaze he has a contact at fox news so you have fox okay. news puts out a huge news article anti-woke comic book will destroy the establishment or whatever <laughs> and all his buddies well. on youtube are making videos <laughs> saying they literally were making videos saying marvel and dc are terrified <laughs> <laughs> uh, and i'm there going guys marvel and dc do not give half of two shits about a libertarian <laughs> influencer making an independent comic now he raised a bunch of money because he's got a bunch of connections at the blaze and whatever else he raised mm -hmm. i think three million dollars and the comic comes out and i said look I, I've, I've looked at the campaign, I've looked at the synopsis, I've looked at the existing art, I go, I can't imagine this comic's gonna be good. And then I read it, I went, yeah, it sucks. It's a shitty comic. But of course, he's one of these guys who's got a huge following, and I'll go, no, this is the future of comics. DC and Marvel are running scared, we are gonna take over entertainment. So meanwhile, I keep talking about this on the show with Dick, and I go, I've read the comic, it's terrible, and all these guys are gaslighting themselves, saying it's the future of comics. And he goes, you're just a hater, you just hate this guy because there's politics. Okay, I'm gonna I read it, I, I bet it's great. Riley up. It was Vito. <laughs> it wasn't dick it was Vito because now the troll makes sense because if he was going to have like give out like free copies and shit yep. he was like name one thing that you liked about the story and then Alex Stein shows up and talks about the Ford F-250 and shit <laughs> it's like I could see where like Vito came up with the fucking plan and just sent Riley out with some marching orders yep and then he read it and he came back. And he's like, that is the worst fucking comic book I've ever read in my life. <laughs> and did and did a very detailed review. He went through it. He gave uh, classic Hollywood notes because Dick is a guy who's worked in the Hollywood system. He's written scripts. You know, he's got notes on his own scripts. He went, well, here's here's your problem. Okay, you don't have a three-act structure. The, the, the main character has no motivation. There is no story hook. It's a superhero comic where you don't even understand who the character is or what powers he has. Again, you know, this is all convoluted. We have the review on our channel. If you go to the Biggest Problem channel, you can... You and the thing that, like, is in that, again, it points more towards my literary thing, is that even with the movie writing that he says Dick has experience with here, even if it was superhero movies, exactly. Look at, like, I could go watch Iron Man 3 and not have to watch the previous two because it's a standalone movie. I mean, I'm going to miss some context, though. And same with like Spider-Man 2 if I went and just watched that. Like, yeah, I could go watch it. I'm going to miss some context. But again, it's it's an end-to-end -end story. It's not like a a comic book series. It's you know, there therein lies the context. Like the series is what carries over. Yeah, these are one-off battles, but like 
look at the first version of Iron Man. 90% of that movie was setting up, like, the establishment of the character. If he had yeah. done that for his full fucking first issue of a comic, it would have been worse. Well, the thing is, like, what I've seen so far of Eric's uh, stuff, it kind of rings true to, like, the overall, like, portrayal of, like, beat for beat for how modern superhero films have been uh, going. And that's not to discredit, like, Eric July by comparing him to the Marvel, like, multiverse shit. But the more I keep watching that, it seems less and less about being superheroes and rather just being in a fucking ragtag fucking army that gets together to do a specific job that their skills are, you know, useful in combating against. Kind of like, almost like suicide a suicide squad. Kind of almost. Oh, well, it's almost like a fucking militia, if anything. Okay. Like, there's a there's an army of evildoers that are coming here that are trying to invade, and you're our only, like, frontline defense that we've got. And what I've seen of, like, uh, Isom, it seems like uh, from the first issue or, like, the first hundred pages, it sets that up because it doesn't look like these people are really in peril of a megacorp. It's just, like, disparate different people with uh, powers or abilities uh existing. taking on different yeah yeah just existing it's kind of like one punch man in a sense you know with like the hero association and it's treated like a, a day-to-day job like you get called in like a, a police officer would over the uh over the scanner yep it's like we got a 115 giant fucking monster stomp in the city go get them yep it just seems like it's like that. I think that's what most superhero like shit has like evolved into is like almost a fucking a paramilitary kind of exercise in fiction. I just think Rather about than... it like if I took probably even say the first hundred pages of Iron Man, which would probably get me theoretically a third of the way through the movie, but I'll be. I'll even be more than charitable and say, say it gets me up to the point that he's in the cave, but he hasn't built the, the arc resistor and all that. And I just ended it there. And then I use that point on to judge the rest of the cinematic Marvel universe, regardless of phase off of it. Like that's what they're trying to do here. In my opinion, they're trying to say that his whole comic is failed. And like, I don't even think we've seen the end of act one. I don't even think we're at like the, the uh, intermission of act one. Yeah. It just seems like it's a really slow burn. And I mean, if you're going to build off of it, you kind of want to set a lot of foundation for it. Yeah. And I mean, in this case, he's got at least three other storylines coming off of this. Yeah, again, it's like you gotta lay the fa- you gotta lay the groundworks before you can like build the skyscraper. <laughs> yeah, and they're wanting they're wanting the whole fucking thing laid out in one day. Like we've got uh, furniture coming tomorrow. <laughs> again, it, it's like I said about them. It's like they're so fucking porn brain that they can't bother with a little titillation or just like, um, what was the other word I used? Uh, mystery. Yeah, uh, just put yeah. in between to pat it out and like give you something to look forward to you listen to his notes like i know one of the ideas that they don't want to mention but they describe perfectly or what they're trying or not describe perfectly but are um like constantly wanting to happen is like Chekhov's gun you know what that is patrick i've I can't remember it right now. I've been burnt out with the religion portion of this stream. <laughs> uh, okay. Chekhov's gun is basically like if you mention something and you pay like attention to it, there should be something that happens within the next three beats that involves it. Like, say in a movie, a character looks uh, is like in their house and it shows a scene with a rifle on a mantle and you hear a knock at the door. Then the guy who goes to answer it uh, gets spooked by who's at the door, and then gunshots go off. 
basically he's forced to retreat and then there's a chase around the house and when he finally gets the drop on the bad guy he has the gun off the mantle yeah okay yeah that that's basically what Chekhov's gun entails okay is that if you're going to focus on something within a scene or within a literary point of view like what you've described or what you've shown you made a focal better yeah yeah it better it better play a part in the payoff yeah Okay, that makes sense. Again, you know, this is all convoluted. We it have... seems like that's what they want. They want the action point. They want to see, like, okay, what can this guy do? Yeah. But they're just being strung along, and they hate that. Yeah. They're wanting the Chekhov's gun resolution to certain points. Yeah. The review on our channel, if you go to the Biggest Problem channel, you can you listen to his notes. And honestly, he gave what seemed like pretty fair notes. Was he harsh? Yeah, he was like, look, it's really not good. It was unbelievably harsh. He was very harsh. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't say, he didn't say I want to Dick kid. Masterson style. <laughs> We're a comedy podcast, okay? He's yeah, going to yeah. give the review in a way that is funny. And, yeah. But at the end of the day, it's not we wish you know harm on you and your children. It's, hey, this is a shitty comedy. Might be, though. And a lot, no, 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 no. <laughs> I, saw him, I saw him laugh and laugh at Boogie's butthole cancer. I mean, he was so happy. <laughs> That's different. It was a That's different. <laughs> I think Dick does genuinely wish harm on Boogie. <laughs> well, I have a lot more. Okay, I'm with you now. They have more history. There's more there. Uh, so he puts out this review, and now for the past three, or maybe the past month, I guess, again, this huge fan base of anti-woke comic fans have been, uh, really, they're really mad at us that we reviewed his comic. Uh, and that we gave it a negative review, and we said, well, we, we just think it's bad. If he puts out a good one, we'll tell you, but in the meantime, we kind of think you guys are just throwing money. Again, again, he's a first-time writer, mm -hmm. never written a comic in his life. That's not a good formula, <laughs> like, it's not a good formula. You don't just knock it out of the park on your first try. We said, well, look, maybe it'll get better. Maybe the next one will be better. But right now, it kind of seems like you guys yeah, are just throwing money like at this saying guy. Edison was shit at making light bulbs. Yeah. <laughs> it's like he, he he thought of a thousand different ways how to make a light bulb work, and it didn't. Yeah. And, his, and then a guy asked him, was like, if you failed a thousand times, why keep going? It's like, well, I found a thousand ways how not to make a light bulb. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and to this point, like, when I hear this argument, too, like, has Vito been involved with any other known comics? Not that I know of. So I mean, he, I mean, he, he basically is like a drifter. He'll go from group to group and whatnot, and latch on and leech. Yeah, that's all it is. Like the comic skate shit is like the most recent one. Oh man, because you have this dream of winning this culture war, mm -hmm. and uh, comic books seem like a weird place to start. Like, 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 there's a lot Maybe. of comics that are traditionally like super woke. The whole idea of the X Men is about the. It's about the. It's about AIDS. Look at the name. It's about trans people. It's about AIDS. <laughs> Don't yeah. tell Eric July that he's one of these guys who will tell you no. That's a myth. That's a myth the liberals invented about the X Men. Wait, it was what? never about social justice. About AIDS. Yeah, they actually they touch on it real quick here, and it makes sense. So that's the kind of guy. Uh, what we're talking about. Well, Everyone cartoon, knows I, it's I, lame to care about comic lore. It's, it's cool to about, care about Lord of the Rings lore deeply, though. Yeah, but... that 80s comic <laughs> where they've all got something wrong with their blood and they need to be quarantined off and, then, and deemed to be less. That's that's the whole point of it. They've all got something wrong with their blood. All the X Men are mutants. They're they're mutated through their blood, through their DNA, whatever. So I mean, I mean, all I picked up from the X Men is like it was an allegory for disability. Yeah, and that's what I always thought was that they were going through with that, but I could see, especially with the birth of it in the 80s and the height of the AIDS pandemic, epidemic, whatever it was, like, mm -hmm. I, I could see how there would be some pull in from that. Yeah, I mean, that's a bit too on the nose of the whole blood thing, though. Yeah. I mean, if it was like a direct correlation one for one, yeah, I would agree. But I think the way how it was presented outside of like what caused the fucking superpowers is more or less the community that it surrounds. And I figured it was like disabled and rejected people. Yeah. And see, I grasped that when I've seen it before and when I've like really thought of like what it's representative of, I would have gone more with a disability over a rare blood yeah, because, disease <laughs> but it does yeah, fit it like, yeah it's like rejects of society but i mean again it's like there was no cure for aids on top of that and they were like I lepers or lepers yeah. in, a, in a prison sense anyway 
Well, yeah, if it was, like, comparative to leprosy, like, where it was actually contagious by touch, like, I can understand quarantining them off, but it's, like, it's only transferable through, like, sex or bloodletting and shit like that. Yep. And it's, like, none of that shit happens in the X-Men, so it's kind of, like, a very tacit one-centric thing that they're tying into it. I mean, outside of, like, the guy who created it, like, admitting that, yeah, it was to represent the AIDS pandemic, I mean... Yeah, I think that's the, not a lot. I mean, the, the three ties that, that they one... use is the blood. Um, they used the the quarantining or the outcasts from society, and then society's mm-hmm. uh, view of them. So I would say, because yeah. I mean, there's that segregation with... of it. That's happened with mental patients. I mean, yeah, hell, the X, the X Men's like, uh, what what's the building that they go to? Doctor Xavier's house. Or yeah, something? yeah the the school. Yeah, it just seems more of like a sanatorium. I yep. mean, you had that for like tuberculosis. You had that for the mentally infirm. Yep. You had that for like a lot of different things. And I guess if it was just like the way how they get their superpowers, it was written in the eighties and just being generally outcasted. If those were the three things that led you to think it was in reference to AIDS, I could get that, but that could literally apply to any other thing too. Exactly. Like, because (laughs) history teaches us that it does repeat and rhyme just, you know, switches on and off, but well, and we uh, do end up repeating the same thing over and over again. The thing that's easily more, uh more uh tack to disability versus the the AIDS thing is the, it's non transferable. It's not necessarily transferable. Let's just say it that way. There are kids yeah, in the, that whole story of that universe that the kids will have something and the parents will have nothing. Well yeah that's the thing. It's just like I saw that because like Dr. Xavier's in a wheelchair and I'm like Okay, so we're dealing with a disabled man who has superpowers. Then we have people who, like, can transform into, uh, well, not different creatures, but have, like, uh, animalistic sides of their appearance. Yep. Like, beast man and whatnot. It's like, okay, skin afflictions or, like, other, like... Multiple uh, personalities or whatever. Yeah, basically. And it's like, is it trying... Like, I mean, you could make a strong argument for both, but it could be a mix of the two at the end of the day. It's like AIDS people were treated as disabled. Yeah, I just... I guess my biggest thing would be, like, when you look at AIDS, like, the biggest transmission of AIDS was from partner to partner. So, like, yeah, for and... me, it would make more sense to say, look, the X-Men are, are based on the AIDS pandemic if it was, like, a lineage thing, like like a invincible thing where you had the father as a superhero, the mother wasn't, mm-hmm. and then the child is. Oh, yeah, Patrick, then, like, I thought you... Oh. Uh, I was going to say, the other thing that would make me believe it was more disabled is because all these people are going to a special school. Yep. That would be another I mean... point. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, you know, maybe we should set up a debate for that, like get a bunch of comic book nerds who are into X-Men and see, like, how... How far they could take that out. That'd that would be, be fun. That would be very interesting. It's like What's the up, AIDS buddy? versus disability debate. X-Men style. <laughs> I was going to, I was going to make the joke of saying that, um, that, uh, that the, that the epidemic was because of oopsie doopsie. Uh, <laughs> That's all it was. Thank you. I, I'm, I'm here all night. I'm here all night. <laughs> 80s comics where they've all got something wrong with their blood and they need to be quarantined off and, they, and deemed to be lesser versions of humans yeah. and, and all this stuff. Yeah, um, I watched a, a clip of the the I review where, where Dick went on this guy's show. And I don't know anything about the Eric July character outside of what I see you and, and Dick talking about him. Yeah. And Dick is such a funny you know, over the top guy that you can sometimes forget that he's a really good writer. He knows his shit. And so he was like in that call with a bunch of people I'm not familiar with, like 
absolutely dominating with like, hey, I read this part right here. There's mo no motivation for this to happen. Also, this second panel, it doesn't line up with the first one. The wall shouldn't be in this position. Uh, there's this character. It seems like you're you're bothering oh. this character more than it is actually <laughs> saving anyone. There's no established reason for him to care about this. Oh, like he, he was he, was, he went to town with like, and it wasn't like obviously jokes, but a lot of it was simply like, he has very this, real is, criticism. this is yeah. this is poorly structured, and this story does not deliver anything. Is what his point was. A really good know. example from his review is that at one point the main character whose name is Isom, he's trying to find this missing girl. Uh, and he goes to meet with an old uh, an old friend who ends up, you know, he's kind of like the kingpin character of this universe. He's an evil businessman guy. And the guy basically tells him, I don't know where this girl is. You need to leave. And then this this security guard, who kind of is like an older guy, like, you almost feel bad for the security guard. He's like an older guy. He's got like white dreads. He's like, all right, sir, you're going to have to leave. And the hero immediately punches him in the gut and he does that thing. You ever play like the new Mortal Kombat games where there's like an x-ray and you see the bones snapping and there's <laughs> yeah. blood everywhere? Yeah. And you're like, hold on. So he just got told politely by, maybe a little firmly, like, sir, you're going to have to leave the premises. And the hero of the story responds by punching through the man's <laughs> sleeve. <laughs> you're like, I thought he was so the I, good guy. I don't so I crippled the security man. <laughs> so I crippled the security guard. We had, yeah, a fan, we had another fan go and review it and he's just like, he wrote it from the point of view of the security guards. He's like, these heroic <laughs> security guards are trying to stop the dastardly <laughs> villain known as Ice. <laughs> and it really does kind of read like the hero is a genuinely terrible person. And oh, I don't yeah. think he Dude, wrote some, it that some way of on the purpose. some of the dick critiques were like I was sitting there listening. And I'm like, oh. Oh, that's the Dick was like, dude, this guy's just a plug-in for yourself. The only thing that upsets this character is being disrespected because being respected is the only thing you care about. And I'm like, oh, 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 oh that was he casually threw that in. Like that was like in the back. <laughs> yeah. very, very funny. Well, I think uh, I drives... haven't read the comic, so who knows? Like, I'm well, just that's thinking, the, oh, it could be brilliant. Great. The thing that drives mm -hmm. Dick the most nuts is again, this guy has a lot of friends in a lot of high places, and they're all not hugging and telling everybody they're telling literally you know youtubers are saying this is the future of comics right like they have made videos with that title and you so go Dick oh okay that he doesn't have a group of ball washers is that what you're telling me Vito? <laughs> that he doesn't have a bunch of high up ball washers patting his ass all the time and he only has you yeah that's that's what Vito would like you to think well that's what he's saying yeah <laughs> well what did you like about the comic and they'll say well i haven't read it yet and you go hold, hold on one second you have made multiple videos telling your viewers that Eric July's Ripperverse, he, he named it after his, himself, is the future of the comic world, that DC and Marvel are scared of this guy, and you didn't read the comic. Like, yeah. is that not ethically a little unsound to be p pitching this to well, your viewers? was Eric July the one who wrote the Fox News headline? No. <laughs> I mean, is he responsible for their version of the marketing? No. Just like, you I mean, know, they, all these people were that likely are... likely doing him a favor. Yeah, just like all these other YouTubers, you could sit there and say, like, yeah, they're entitled to have their opinions one way or another, but, you know, they may have taken it and been more charitable just to support a creator, which is the same charitability I'm sure Vito will want when his comic comes out. And he'll be very pissed if someone like an Eric July comes along that's not from the Eric July camp, although he's immediately going to put him there. And says, hey, Vito, your comic sucks. Here's why. <laughs> you should have had a better editor. Like, I'm sure that'll burn his ass pretty good, too. I mean, hey, Vito. I mean, I know taking ideas is wrong, but did you have to take them from Christian? <laughs> <laughs> that would be the ultimate insult if we could get Christian to review <laughs> i mean here's the funny thing it's just like he won't even well the argument that i'd have him make if he would ever do it he won't because uh he'll say like everything in mine is copyrighted by me and shit like that yeah he wouldn't like admit <laughs> that he took characters no that weren't supposed to be in his book because they're copyrighted no but it would be funny just to have chris chan just sit there and be like Hey, I know this character. <laughs> yeah, because Sailor Moon and Superman. Yeah. yeah. As like, the future of know, comics when you haven't read it yet. It's like, what did yeah. you like about it? Oh, oh that's so much. much. <laughs> <laughs> well, it Man. confirms my political biases in that way. That's, that's like, what it is. Right. Yes. They'll say that. They'll say, well, you know, at least it's not woke. And you go, that's not, a lot of comics are not woke. That's not enough. You don't change the game. You don't establish this conservative uh, parallel economy you're hoping for just by taking the politics out of the book. If anything, you ended up with, this book is so flat, you go, I wish you had put politics in it. I honestly wish it was the adventures of conservative man punching the liberals out because there would have been something <laughs> going on in it. In, in the bottom left pane, is that the big bad security guard that had yes. taken down? Well, no, that's like, that's the ultra security guard that he fights. He only fights security guards. <laughs> All right, I got it now. <laughs> he hates security guards. Got got <laughs> At some point, this guy got removed from some premises somewhere, and he has not let it go. It's, like, it's like, kind of crazy. Got, they kicked him out of an Albies oh, in 1996. Oh, the tables have turned.
<laughs> Riley, anybody? Yeah. <laughs> he probably got removed by some security guard. <laughs> and now he's mauling about it forever like Dick. Yep. And now they're all crying. And security guards are bad. <laughs> that I better buy that awesome comic book. <laughs> hey, you know, Vito's still writing his. He could write that in. <laughs> <laughs> He just can't stand yeah. it. Yeah, I'm a lot less interested in the hero's origin story than I am the author, author's origin story at this point. Yeah. 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 Why does he hate to you? security guards? What happened? I want, yeah, I want Sir, the midnight release is tomorrow night. You have to leave. No, I'm staying all night. Like, what? <laughs> well, that's what, embarrassing. What yeah. Apparently, it's it's not going to take down Marvel and DC. Was but a, you know what might? Super killer, right? That's uh, that's the hope. Uh, it is unfortunate timing. See, I did not tell Dick to review ISOM, but he, he kind of got pressured into it by some other people. So now everyone's saying, oh, well, you, you, Dick only reviewed ISOM because he's trying to promote your comic book. And I'm like, no, no, I, we had nothing to do with that, but I do have my own comic book coming out. I swear to God, we did not try to manufacture some crazy controversy. I can't tell Dick what to do in real life. No, no winker. <laughs> <laughs> Dick just went, I'm going to review ISOM. And I honestly, I was like, oh, this is not going to be good for us. But go right now, as I'm releasing my comic, Dick, no. <laughs> it's created this of, top of mind. <laughs> it's created a bit of a controversy. But I'll say this. Look, uh, I don't want, this is not a fight between my comic and Eric's comic. Honestly, I want to be left alone. Let me make my comic on myself. Mm. I don't want to be compared to ISOM. <clears throat> Which is ironic because that's literally what fucking Eric July wanted. To just be left the fuck alone. Oh, fuck. <laughs> uh, I could technically skip the charity scheme because I've already explained that. This one was bad. I think I'm just going to end on that because I don't have enough people here to enjoy Were the cat you video. you trying to ruin Eric's business? With the charity? No. Are you trying to ruin Eric's business now? Yeah. Uh, I don't think anyone should buy Eric's comics. Uh, money spent. You're trying to ruin his business now? Yeah, no one should buy Eric's comics. Money spent in the pursuit of bad art is wasted money. Money should be spent. Wait, you're trying to ruin his business because of bad art? Yeah, his art's terrible. Not because uh, of the charity shit. No, I don't care about the charity shit. Uh, you I don't I, care I, about the charity shit. Why'd you talk about the charity shit so much? Well, I think he's I... Nick slurs so bad in this fucking conversation too. He's charged to share shit. I think dumb people are giving more money to Eric thinking that they're helping charity. And I think they should keep their money. Do you think charity is, uh, sorry. Do you think Eric is scamming charity, the charity? Oh uh, man. Yes. Uh, I you think do even, okay. Look, look, stop. Okay. I, I get that you thought before after you contacted the charity and I talked to Eric about this. Um, yeah. I'm pretty clear. He says there's an existing agreement and I take him at his word. I don't, uh, you don't know. I don't believe your opinion. I understand where your opinion com is coming from, but mm -hmm. I don't believe it. So, um, you fine. think that even after uh, Eric took money for charity, yeah. you called him out, you called the charity, the charity made a post, he made a subsequent donation. Doesn't that alleviate any problems you perceived with it? Like, isn't he okay now? No, I, I don't think he gave them enough, number one. And number two- How much did I, he have given him? 100%, at least 95%. If he collected, whatever he collected- much, What percentage did he give him? I don't know. So he might've given them 100%. Yeah, that'd be great. So why are you suggesting that he gave you otherwise? What reason do you have to believe that? Because I haven't heard him say what the numbers are. Say what the numbers are, and it's fine. Um, what if he doesn't want to say it? Like, what if he doesn't want to give you any fucking ammo? Like, well, honestly, no, seriously, like, seriously. And uh, people are gonna, people are gonna say whatever about yeah, me, but legitimately, right now. Ammo by giving him a specific amount, he'll just move the goalpost. Well, it should have been more. Yep. You know? Yeah. Now. Yeah. Um, because I actually don't think this is germane to the issue, and I'm gonna ask you the the hard question. Go for it. Why should Eric tell you what he gave to the charity? He should be proud of it. Why, though? Like, because that's validating you. You're a fucking asshole. No, it's validating the charity because it sets a it's precedent. Not validating. The charity no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. You asked me about the question. Stop it. Stop it. The charity, the charity is not to take pride in it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he, he could do it and completely selflessly and not give a shit. Like, he doesn't have to flaunt it to anybody. He owes nobody. I mean, yeah, Eric can be humble. He doesn't have to be prideful like you, Dick. Yep. Made a statement. They said they were happy. They loved Eric. He was giving them money. Why are you doing this? Because it sets a precedent for other people that deal with charities. You cannot use charity as a marketing tool and not give them what they're owed. They're owed but the, money. But Somebody the has to said, defend the fucking charities. The charity said they liked it. 
Well, they, of course they, they would. They, they like any money, but Nick, they can't be the bad guy. If some if somebody's got to watch out for charities, it's somebody else because it risks their business relationship with these guys. If they got a dollar, they'd be happy. I'd be happy if they got a hundred percent of the dollars. Look, if I if I tell a charity I'm gonna give them ten thousand dollars and I give them one thousand dollars, the charity can say, you know what, uh Nick Nick told me they were gonna give me ten thousand dollars. They gave me one thousand. We really appreciate the the money, but you know, we are a charity. Um, we're really trying to help kids. Are you saying they wouldn't do that ever? They like would they, that. they would That's never call someone else. No, a charity would not, a charity that's one guy in a fucking room trying to deliver comics to veterans and kids would not risk blowing their reputation with Eric, who's a fucking insane narcissist, over a couple thousand dollars. They're just going to keep going. A couple thousand dollars is their fucking, like, three-month operating budget. You really think they they won't ask for that? They won't say, hey, it, you know what, like, uh, Eric has pledged more money. We're, we're just, we're really happy to be doing business with him. We know that uh, future donations are going to come in as they're fulfilled. I don't think they would confront him about it, no. You don't think so? No. Okay, so let me get this straight. So the charity makes a statement, and I, I get it. You, you say the charity is not going to be, they're, they're not going to be public about this. They're not going to say anything. They make yeah. a statement. I mean, but the then, charity would. Yeah, and that, I mean, that's actually I mean, Nick's argument, which I agree with, <laughs> ironically. Yeah, because, I mean, if it's, someone's going to promise 10000 and they only give you 1000 it's like they've already planned out, like, what the expense is and how long they can operate for with yeah. that 10000 promise. Yeah. It's like, it, it's treat it like as expected income like if you know you're going to get uh, say a two thousand dollar paycheck by the end of the month for doing construction or something and you have your eyes set on like uh i don't know uh, a 75 dollar power drill that you yeah. need in order to finish up projects and you've got like all these other bills you're specifically cookie cuttering out that 75 dollars out of the two thousand that you are expecting amongst all the other shit that you have to pay yeah, exactly. You're budgeting. That is literally what they're going to do is budget. Yeah, any that, any good business is going to do exactly that. Yeah, and if they're not going to get what they are, like, you know, promised, it, I mean, of course they would be upset, and of course they would put it out there because, I mean, hell, here's what you said. I've got it in writing. I got you on audio. Where's the extra? You can't just, just stifle me like this and pretend to be a hero. Well, yeah, they, they would have they cry. would have two options. Well, technically three. They could remain silent, which is going to do nothing for them to progress their charity, which is what Dick's saying. And realistically, that would do nothing. They have another option that they're not going to discuss here, which is they could go to their benefactors and say, hey, look, you know, we had a pledge for five thousand dollars. We budgeted. Uh, we were planning to purchase, you know. 35 brand new laptops and you know they only were able to contribute a thousand dollars of that um would you guys be able to complete the rest of that uh budgetary promise and then you know what those people will go on to say things and then the third option is, is like you're saying they would say something because they're going to say like unfortunately we well we budgeted for 35 but because of the donations we're only able to offer 10 yeah or hey, seven more like but yeah again it, it, it's just like the if these donations like the donation itself isn't going into like cost overhead for running the charity and is going strictly towards like the packages that they offer as their charity service yeah that's going to throw a fucking monkey wrench in it yeah yeah and it, it's not unbecoming of a charity to say that stuff and then on the other side you know even if they remain silent about it it still can come out. I mean, if you look at the completion of stuff. Yeah. I mean, those charities, they were just promised money. They weren't promised a certain amount. Yeah. Yeah. Except for a few of them. I, if I remember correctly, right. I don't know if any of them got promised a specific amount. I know no, they promised was, like, to send just... all of the, all of the profit to it, but they never actually picked a charity. That was their, that was their caveat with that. Is they never yeah, designated a charity. Yeah, I was probably remembering like there were certain charities where they were promising they would raise a certain amount and then it would be divvied up between the other charities. Yep. Which would give you a specific number of what they could have expected yeah. if it actually were donated. So, I mean, I, I think it's going to come to light no matter what way. I don't think what Dick is doing with trying to force a hand on a non-issue like the charity saying no, they're meeting their obligation. 
and Eric saying, I'm paying my obligation. No one owes you anything beyond that. And then on top of that, like knowing from my wife's work, he could donate it completely anonymously and you wouldn't even have a way to trace it other than going through their financial records. Yeah. If anything, like, uh, what Dick did here was just fuck himself over as well as Eric by having him fork out more money than what he didn't even know he was supposed to donate. Yeah. From what I understand, it was, it was already pledged. Eric was trying to explain this to Nick at one point, And I ended up removing that because such an awful circular argument because Nick is trashed and he's about as drunk as he gets by the end of this for the entire conversation with him. And he's not understanding that. He's like, yeah, there's technically two levels to this. There's the book level of it. And then there's a constant money donation going on as they met their goals. Yeah. And I, you know, the funny thing is like Dick changes up his argument from being poor writing to the art. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's because like the writing did get better. You just had to wait for issue two. If the timeline matches up here. Um, by the time, because by the time this is happening, issue two would have already been released, and issue three was on its way. Yeah. And I guess like they had they lost their argument for bad writing because issue two either paid off in dividends for the writing segment that they had to switch to. Oh, he's using three D assets. Yeah. Yeah, and at this time, they also had the switch over. It was in and around here, and I didn't play it yet because I'm just going to play that as a whole different part because it reiterates a lot of parts, so I can actually... What I'm planning on doing to break up the stream is I'm just going to play the EVS video and then the new stuff. But right about now, EVS has switched over to 100% Team Dick and Vito. Yeah. So I think that's where they're getting the empowerment for the the art side. Yeah, and I think that was due to Yellow Flash his involvement is what caused EVS to fucking separate from the Eric July crowd. Uh the stream that I watched made a com- pretty compelling argument of for all people. Zack Snyder, the director. <laughs> yeah. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> the Snyder cut? That's what did it? Well, technically, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In a very technical roundabout way, yes. <laughs> <laughs> this video, this guy did a pretty good job at like laying out everything beforehand, and he's like, no, I'm pretty sure I traced it back to Zack Snyder being on a, on a certain podcast with EVS and everything else, and it just cascaded. Jeez. And it's just a matter of people getting pissed off. And all it was was Zack Snyder was on. And it was during uh, pandemic time and all that. And it was during a lot of the the Asian um, uh, racism kind of going on with everything. And he's like, I've got Asian kids and I don't appreciate that stuff. And he made some very broad painted statements. And those broad painted statements made the podcast look bad. And then there was infighting from that, and Wait from a that EVS was making anti-Asian jokes and shit. No, technically not. It wasn't even like anti-Asian jokes or anything. It's just this guy made a weird, broad statement out of nowhere. Zack Snyder did. Oh. And it was just a weird, very broad statement, and it became like a big issue, and then this became an internal issue. So, it's pretty interesting. I don't want to spoil it for uh, who, whoever may be listening still. But, yeah, it's pretty interesting. And that's actually what got me into the whole Eric July side of the story here. Let's be honest. They made a statement. And then Eric gave more money yeah. to the charity. Like, actually in excess of even what people expected, right? I don't know that. I don't know you what don't know people. Exp- no, I don't know what people expected, and I don't know what the total of what he gave them. I know the post said eight thousand dollars, but I don't know how much of 8, that eight thousand bucks is a lot of money, right? It's a lot. It's but what? It's, not, it's, it's, it's fifteen hundred comics. It. 
It's fifteen hundred comics, right? It's fifteen hundred comics at seventeen dollars a piece or fifteen dollars a piece. So well, I don't know on, how much on, the total on. that is. Okay, stop though. Hold on, calculator. Fifteen hundred divided by uh, wait, no, it's it's eight thousand. Shit, it's hard. I'm not <laughs> Asian. Eight thousand dollars divided by fifteen hundred. Ironically, Nick does make an Asian joke right there. <laughs> <laughs> five bucks. That's five dollars and thirty three cents of pure gain per book. That's a lot. No, because we know he's, he's seventeen dollars. So what's he pocketing? Ten bucks a piece. He's selling the book for thirty-five bucks. Oh, huh. yeah, but what's it cost him? Two fifty a I piece. I don't know. No, well, I don't know he, either. Listen, I mean, listen, what's the problem with asking for transparency though. and charity? Okay, hold on though. You are drawing your number from Vito, right? Vito said, "Well, it's got to be three bucks a book." No, 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 no. I'm drawing it from. They had a transparent uh, rip of. I mean, first common sense. How much the fucking comic book cost? Like two fifty. I don't know. Well, Eric posted, no it. Eric, posted, Eric posted. Eric posted okay. on his site that he, that he bought from... like fifty thousand copies for one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. That's two fifty a piece. There you go. That's cost. That's a fucking write-off. But where's the money? The money isn't the write-off in the product that was sold. The money is the money collected. Give all the money to the fucking charity. What about the labor? Fuck the labor. The guy. They're already working. Fuck the labor. Like yeah. Fuck I, the labor. No, but you can donate the, the labor. You can you can donate the value of the labor and ask that to be part of the donation. That's not well, a how problem. much was that. Well, uh, you, you say it's two fifty per book, but look, cost cost of the book. Okay, I I get that the cost of fifty thousand orders is two fifty per book. Yeah, but I don't know that that's the cost that they paid for the books that are in inventory, right? Because look, I I, I get it. Hold on for just a second. If I if I order fifty thousand books, it's two fifty per book. I don't know how yeah. they did their ordering. So let's say they ordered ten thousand lot lots of ten thousand rather than lots of fifty, right? So we say okay. uh, book costs more than than two fifty. Okay. No, that's a okay. All right, let's just say it. If, okay. if you're at lots of two, if you're lots, Dick does not understand tiered pricing. I've realized. It's a ten thousand versus yeah, lots of fifty. It's mass production on scale. It's yeah. like if if you're going to put in the labor to run the machine that prints out these books. Yeah. You're not only just paying for like the usage of the ink. It's just like the labor involved, which is. Well, and typically it's one work. Uh, uh, material costs pass down too. Like, so if I buy, uh, I buy the, if I'm printing the book, if I buy a thousand pound roll, it's going to cost me significantly less that I can then pass down versus if I got to buy a, a 500 pound roll because you're wanting less and I'm not going to carry around waste at my facility. I mean, think of it like this, cause I work in automotive, um, usually we get like five crane engines from Ford, like the coyote yeah. engines. Yeah. And we, and we put them in builds and if I remember correctly, the coyote engine is like a upwards of $10,000 mm -hmm. per crate motor. And this is like pre-spec built. Like it has specific horsepower and torque uh, output. Yep. And it's got specific parts made. Now, if you buy them in bulk, you can usually knock about maybe a thousand or two thousand off yep. uh, each unit, which uh, if you were just going to string purchase them, which is like a single purchase, that's yep. ten thousand bucks plus shipping and taxes. If you were to knock off the two thousand uh, per engine, if you buy a, like a a shipment of five of them, you're still paying the tax, the shipping and handling for each engine, but you get like a significant write off because they can pretty much produce those off of an assembly line. Yep. And they usually have these already produced off of assembly line waiting. Like if they have yeah. um, certain overstock procedures and then they will give you the discount as if you were like putting in the order for it to be printed off immediately or like, you know, pr uh, produce off the line. Yeah. And see, I worked in a lot of specialty manufacturing for like uh, agriculture and stuff like that. So like when they did like uh, custom one-off orders for someone, like uh, it was all based on like material costs. Like as far as like uh, if I bought, oh, it depends on like you're talking about now rolled versus sheet steel, but say I bought 10 sheets of 16 gauge steel is going to cost significantly less than if I just need five, even. And it's just a matter of me buying the materials in. And then I transfer that cost down to each individual part that I'm cutting out of those. So maybe I can get four parts per sheet. So 20 versus, oh, 
what did I say? Versus 40. So, because half the amount. So, I'll just go with that. My brain's not working right now. Um, But, like... But basically, when you're getting that order, you're basically paying for... You're basically ordering five, but you get so much of a discount to where, like, the fifth engine is, like, free. Yeah. Yeah, and see, where we were doing with stuff is, like, we also didn't have room to store steel perpetually yeah. like indefinitely like you know with a plant like that they they have they have storage space warehousing available but you know say say air july's fucking comic is printed on a special gloss type paper or something or requires special ink and stuff like that to where they're not gonna hold it on the shelf they're gonna order yeah, it because... for his needs so if he needs ten thousand they're gonna order a vastly larger quantity at a better price than if he's only printing off a thousand yeah because if you're dealing with like pen and uh paper like that has like an expiration date before like the products go bad so you also have yeah. that to factor in for bulk for uh bulk purchasing options is because that's yep. a that's an expirable material whereas metal i mean it's indefinite literally... aside from resurfacing yeah, aside from, like, you know, the occasional rust buildup if it's, like, been in storage. Like, I mean, you've probably seen the videos where they have those crate engines or crate motorcycles oh, yeah. from, like, World War II that people get or the MREs and shit. Yep. It's, like, that shit's going to need some a uh, little bit of, like, tinkering <laughs> on the upkeep just to make it look nice. Yeah. And perform optimally. But if you just slap it on and put it together, yeah, it'll work for a bit. Yeah. Whereas, like, paper will just rot away and ink yep. will fade or just, like... Dry um, out or... It, yeah, yeah. Lead through, turn to dust. Yep. So, I, I don't think... I do not think that Dick is thinking of any of that. I think he's thinking that yeah. no matter what, it's going to cost X amount of dollars, whether I buy one <laughs> or whether I buy 100000 and that's just not feasible. I mean basically he's lacking not just production line knowledge but logistics yeah on just like how to get the production going and then like nick is saying like like the actual like uh labor into it but even when you figure like labor like i was talking about you know if i can fill a trailer i can ship a trailer for drastically cheaper than if i'm going less than load if i go less than load then it's going to be an up price because they don't have a guarantee that they're going to fill the rest of that trailer. So they have to make it financially viable for them. So it's, it's kind of why like Amazon is a shithole as it is when you have two day free shipping. Yeah. (laughs) It's because they have, it's because they have to load the fucking truck or the plane or however it's getting to you to the fucking gills. Yep. With everyone else's shit that's been ordered and then it has to be distributed. Yep. Yeah, he has he has no wherewithal on any of that, which tells me that, you know, you're not even smart enough to ask the questions to know the answer. You're wanting the answer, yeah. but you don't even know the questions that you're asking. I mean, he's just looking at it as a laborer, someone who's just looking over a printing press rather than yeah. someone who's maintaining and feeding the printing press. Yeah, this isn't FedEx Kinko's. You're not going to pay per sheet a flat price, no matter what. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> Dick Masterson thinks that all comic book factories are just Kinko's machine. <laughs> oh, God. 50,000. Obviously, yeah, you have a mix of inventory. You can't just say, like, oh, we're giving, like, we're arbitrarily deciding that the ones we paid more for are the ones we're giving to cancer kids. Like, that doesn't make sense. Actually, with accounting, you can. Well, with accounting, you can say it's 35 bucks a piece. I, but my point but is, no, 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 but, but, in. where'd the cash go, Lebowski? You're, the you're, money? You're, you're, being, you're being cynical and saying, well, with accounting, you can say whatever. But, like, let's be honest with accounting. Yeah. If you're ordering lots of 10,000. Well, I mean, that isn't really lot... accounting. That's appraising. That's, like, a whole different department. Yeah. But what, what Nick does is he does it a smart way where he brings it back to accounting. And I, I was totally on board where Nick immediately said, no, no, no. When you're doing honest accounting, I'm like, yeah, okay, he actually does know his shit here. So Nick's next argument is like actual, as far as I know from working in accounting, it's on point. Like I, I, I actually support it wholly. That's a 50,000. Okay. 50,000 is 25, uh, $2.50 a book. Right. A lot of 50,000, a lot of 10,000 costs more. Maybe it's $4 a book. Maybe it's five. I don't know. I'm not a publisher. 
Sure. But let's okay. let's say, okay, let's say it's five bucks a book. Now let's say you get the book in, it's inventoried for a couple months. A guy goes out, he has to pull one book off a shelf, not 10, not a hundred, not 500. He's pulled one book off a shelf. Uh, yeah. He has to drive his forklift over there. He has to get out. He has to put one book on the fucking pallet. And then he drives over to the rest of the pallet. He puts it down. It takes some time. It takes some effort. It takes some inventory. And he has to do that uh, 50 times. Let's say, now look, I, I get- One book? No, listen, I get the reality of if you have 50 For individual 50 orders- copies of one book. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing is- He's he's thinking of it as literally one book. <laughs> like he cannot conceptualize this at all. Like he's so far out of his depth. And it's you have drunk Nick Ricada putting you out of your depth. Right? Like I get this. That you can go ahead and say, you're not pulling 50 individual books. You're pulling 50 books that are attributed to individual orders. But uh -huh. the labor cost of pulling 50 individual books would be X. Okay. It would be like an hour. They made a pallet of the books they donated. They took a picture of it. So you don't think it costs $17 per book, even if it's a literal one-off order? No, I think, uh, I think max you can charge for, 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 for fulfilling one book at a 3PL is 25 cents. Really? Yeah. 25 cents? But you said it's 250 take a book. Take pack. 250 for the, for the printing of the book. To take the book, put it in a package, 25 cents. To take, to take 1,000 books, put them on a pallet, I'm going to say maybe five hours of work, maybe, maybe 200 bucks. That is such a skewed, skewed alone. Okay. We used to charge between six and 15 bucks for the pallet. Mm -hmm. That's without a single moment of labor. And now you're saying that you're going to have somebody take one individual at 15 bucks an hour, take five hours. Plus, there's the cost of maintenance because, uh, what are they, carrying it literally like five books at a time over to the fucking pallet? Even still, there's potential wear and tear. Uh, you've got medical premiums. you got so much. Like, he is not even conceiving exists in the real world. Well, and he's it, just thinking of it in flat rates. Yeah, and you can't. Like, it's a it, like it's an overall flat rate where it covers everything. Yeah, and, and it goes on even further because, you know, to ship that one pallet, again, may have cost more because now they're going a less than load supplier versus a traditional where it may be their truck going out to other smaller distribution centers that are then put out to the stores. Like... Mm -hmm there's different parts in the supply chain here. <laughs> like, I mean, he's kind of thinking of it's like a newspaper operation rather than like, yeah. you know, a production line because I mean, a newspaper will have its own trucks. It'll have its own employees. It'll have its own printing press and it'll be in like a, what a 10 story building of some sort where it can house all that shit. Well, and then he's and, not even accounting for the fact of, that shit is not being made in house. It's being made at a publisher coming to them. So now you got the time unloading warehousing, then removing from warehousing, doing your shipping and loading, and then going back out. Yeah, I mean, just think of it as like a 3D printer site. Like you can have someone take your schematics and build as many copies of this part that you need yeah. from a 3D printer. And the more that you order, the cheaper it is per unit. Yep. But you're still going to be spending like hundreds on just one uh, single order. Yeah. And that doesn't count in like filament. That just takes in time for where other orders are being placed at the same time because they have to do it on contingency. Because you think like uh, Eric July is the only one who's using that same uh, print shop that's making comic books. No, I'm pretty no. sure there's plenty of other people, including like industries that are like ta that are splitting up the loads between yeah. different publishing houses in order to make like the quota that they need for the sales market yeah and then there's yeah i mean again you know going up the chain even further we haven't even talked about like okay well there's the overhead cost that goes into them charging that price you know yeah, that like that price reason... does not typically include shipping but it includes everything from the labor and the facilities and the maintenance and all that on the machine to print it that's it yeah and not only that this was a charity in which like they said it was 35 dollars per copy of this isom for the charity right yeah okay so that would have to be priority because this charity is a timed event kind of thing 
Yeah, and I think what it was is that he uh, he gave them the books at cost, or I'm pretty sure he gave them the books at cost as part of a charitable donation, and then allowed them to keep anything over uh, cost. So for every thirty five, they paid him back. You know, cost of fifteen bucks, and then, or in this case, they're probably getting thirty bucks back and keeping five dollars per book yeah because he probably had to pay for priority uh, yeah uh, production yeah priority production like and then yeah there's there's just so many more facets of this that he just doesn't even even attempt to think about yeah it's he's he's thinking it very simplified like it's first come first serve and like eric july just found this one publisher in a warehouse that didn't have customers and then he artificially jacked up the prices. Yeah. And it's like, if that's the case, then it's, you know, yeah, that could be fraudulent. But it's not the case. And even when Eric was on there, Eric, again, didn't, in my opinion, did not do a greater idea or idea. I did not do a great uh, ability of articulating that he's buying at different pl- pricing blocks. So, like I said, he probably ordered like ten thousand, and then subsequent orders were like either one or two thousand, which would significantly yeah. increase the price overall. So yeah, he might have gotten those first ten thousand for fucking ten dollars a book, but then when you bring in the other thousand that were charged at fifteen dollars a book, and you break that price up, now we're at ten fifty a book for all of them. Yeah, it's it's basically like. It, and I don't was even know like if a, these industries like, was are this working off of a set cap. Like there was like specifically ten thousand to sell, and like if there were any orders over ten thousand, I think he, like I think he basically round. had a starter amount, and then like as they needed more, he would get more, and like they would kind of work back and forth to dictate the amount ordered. So okay, he could have yeah, done like would... a ten thousand, a one thousand, and a five hundred order, and by the time you get to the five hundred, it's twenty bucks a book. You know, yeah. like. I mean that that's the thing with charities is like people want to support a good cause, you're gonna get a lot of people and you have to set like a I guess you could say a low entry point for when you think that you've successfully made enough for the charity. Yeah. So any kind of runoff or overfill for orders is gonna to have to be accommodated. And what I'm guessing in order to pay the charity the additional payments that he was paying them. It was as they met goals, I think they were distributed out of a fund. So he might have had a potential maximum of $75,000 set away maximum for this charity. That's kind of like, eh, I could afford it. I could get by. But like if we hit it, it's it's going to suck yeah, for maybe that, a day or a week or a month. Yeah, I mean, that's another thing to look at. It. It's just like if you're going to do a charity and you don't meet your marker or if you do, it's like. What if there's like transaction issues with certain people? Yeah. I mean, you, you plan for the worst, like whatever you set as your entry level and how much is that going to divvy out to the charity? You set that aside immediately and then some. Yeah. I I bet you if Eric's as smart as I, I give him credit for, he probably set a maximum amount aside or close yeah. to the full amount aside. To pay enough for the first order and probably at least two subsequent orders. And then, um, you know, obviously as they were going, um, probably the sales ran through his company no matter what. So probably when they sold, he knew to give the charity, okay, here's your money back paid out for all of what you sold. So they... I don't know. It could have worked a couple different ways, in my opinion. They could have uh, got the books completely this... for free and then ended up paying him back just the cost and kept the profit. They could have paid for the books and then sold them for the same price and kept the profit. The money could have been all paid back into him after they paid for the books. And then he's marking everything paid for cost and then sending out just the profit. Like It could have worked a couple different ways, in my opinion. Yeah, and then there's, like, the other factor in this that I don't think is being brought up unless if we're going to account accounting just for, like, the people who print the books for him. But 
if you're going to run like a charity operation or at least run an event, you're going to have to have like some hired hands on help to keep track of shit. Yeah. Yeah. So that could also play into like the money that he was making. Additional like costs. Like, yeah. 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 Additional cost overruns. So that's probably why he marked it up just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I think probably more than anything, I almost guarantee you it's probably the shipping. Because I'm guessing there's probably, it's kind of probably almost like a soda uh, chain distribution where there's a a regional chain that he's sending all his comics to. And then that stuff goes out to the stores that buy that kind of stuff. And then they're doing kind of local fulfillment for all their different partners. Yeah, so he has one truck that or multiple trucks that do routes and they go to these fulfillment centers and then the fulfillment centers disperse out to the stores. Yeah, the dis- the distribution warehouses. So yeah, I I don't know. I just know I just know that dick is totally missing the mark here. Spread across a thousand books, that's a couple cents. So you do you think that Eric July scammed a charity? At I least he was, he was starting to. to. You th- but will you admit, will you admit for the, the world that he uh, has reciprocated and probably compensated, and, and I would even suggest overcompensated for what was accused of him. So he's given more to the charity than he expected to. Uh, that is a, I have no idea what he expected to give. I don't know what he gave. I know they said eight grand. That's it. Should I don't know. Should he have given eight grand to a charity? Should he have given he eight have, grand to this charity? He should have given all of the money that he collected for those comics to the charity. Nobody wants to read fucking ISOM. It's- 1500 books do you not think he gave eight grand of value to that charity plus the books i don't give a fuck what he thinks the value is he should have given all of it i'm not saying what he thinks the value is. i think uh so the so all of value let's do this we're gonna do this because yeah, this is, this is where i actually I, huh this is classic dick whenever he gets mad at someone he just wants to bleed him dry yeah legitimately I disagree with you so oh i know eight thousand divided by fifteen hundred yeah. This is uh, five bucks a book. Yeah. Plus the book. Yeah. Do you not think that five bucks and 33 cents a book plus the book is a legitimate gift? He gives 1,500 books, $8,000 at 17 bucks a book. Look, I, I will not say. Now, don't I ask think, questions and then start talking. I'm going to start talking because it's my show, you fucking loser. Look, I'm going to say <laughs> that I think that 17 bucks may have been an overvaluation, not in bad faith. I think it may have been an overvaluation, but I do say this. I've known a lot of guys who've done indie projects, and I think that uh-huh. $5.33 a book plus the book itself, 17 bucks is actually very fair. I think that's a fair amount of money for him to give. And I actually think he ended what, up what, giving five more bucks than that. a book? No, I think he gave the book plus $5 in charity money. But you haven't and even think, read ISOM. You don't realize, like, the book is a negative. I don't care. He's just going to be fucking pedantic now. You, if should the book pay, is, you, should, you should pay people to read ISOM. It doesn't matter if the book sucks or is good, Dick. All that matters is what the production cost is. I think the production cost of the book, plus $5.33 a book, plus I think he ended up giving more than $8,000. Mm-hmm. I think that he outgave what he promised. And why did he give that $8,000? I don't give a shit. He promised. Was it after less. I started harassing him or not? Do okay, you know? Like, no, I don't do you know. know? But I, I don't know. But listen, do you know if he had a pre existing agreement with this company? No, and it would be very easy for him to solve this confusion by saying explicitly He's, proceeds, this is when I said this, and this is when I gave them this. That's what he did last night. Last night, he last said, night he was a fucking marble mouth retard. He didn't I make one fucking sentence clear last night. Stop. Um, look, there were issues last night which were unclear. I'm with you on that. I've talked about them already on the show. But last night he said very clearly, and I said, and I I challenged him on this. I want to be very clear. I challenged him on this. I said, the public can't know this. And he said, we've we've made it public. We've talked about it. And I said, but without the documents, we don't know. And he said, yeah, whatever. And I said, I don't I don't think you should show the documents to be clear. I do not think he has any duty to do that. Why? We're not we're not the IRS, Dick. Now he might want to. No, but you are just an asshole who doesn't like Eric July. No, I want the I want the charity to not get used by these comic faggots. Okay, but all of these guys but, are trying to sell comics for charity. They're pretending to be nice guys to sell their shitty comics. That's the issue. Do you actually think that Eric committed a fraud on charity? Like, because I can't get there, man. I'm sitting here and look. Yeah, but you don't I, have to, Nick. No, but no, stop. I like I get your argument. You're like he was gonna commit fraud, but I called him out, and then he had to backpedal and donate money 
Yeah. Couple times. Eric clarified yesterday. I have no reason to disbelieve him, and I have no reason to believe you on this because you don't know. Number you've five. said you've never seen an agreement between anybody. Okay, let me say so, this. No, I'm, gonna... I'm not done. I'm not done. Just a second. He said you've never seen an agreement. So Eric comes on and he says we had a pre-existing agreement. We gave them books. We gave them money, and then later, as more money came in, we gave them more money, and we gave more than what the cost of the books would be. Why would I disbelieve him? Why would I believe you? You don't have any data. I I legitimately have no reason to believe you or, er or you or Vito's conclusions about Eric because while I can think you are genuine mm -hmm. in your beliefs, I can similarly say you can be wrong. So I take Eric at his word that he had pre-existing yeah. agreement with the charity to um, accept money. He, ex he says he accepted money before, they delivered the comics, charity made a statement, they delivered money after. I asked Eric very specifically, do you see how someone who hates you and doesn't believe you could see that as fraud. But dude, honestly, do you see how people who believe Eric and legitimately think he's a good guy, which I ultimately do, could right. think that even though you think it's a fraud, he actually had a pre-existing agreement to give them money. He gave them money and it's not untoward. He just has bad fucking verbiage. And I've said this openly. He had bad answers for the charity. I don't think he did anything wrong. I think he had bad answers. So I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. I believe Eric 100% that he had this agreement with the charity and he probably gave them more than what the agreement was. Why should I believe you? Um, I don't think you need to believe me. I can easily understand why people would believe Eric and you, why you would believe him. And of I course think I it's... believe him. I, I, this is the thing people don't understand. I don't have any reason to not believe Eric. I take him at his word. I take That's you fine. at your word. I think that you might be wrong. And That's fine. to be clear, well, you interrupt think, my answer here. Yeah, I'm going to let you finish, but this is my show. Fuck off. To be very clear, I do think that on the charity, mm -hmm. that though he has answered poorly, and I've called him out on it, I think you are ultimately wrong on the truth of it. I think that Eric has been on the up and up on the charity. Um, That's fine. Uh, I don't, it doesn't bother me if people believe or don't believe Eric. What I have seen in Eric's behavior is that he lies about everything he lies i don't think so i don't think he Nick, lies you have to let me talk you have Sorry. to fucking let me i mean i feel like i'm talking to eric here why don't you, you are some shoe polish and Listen. fucking paint yourself I'm, black and interrupt me some i mean come on I'm, that's twice i don't need to be black to interrupt you i'm just gonna i'm just gonna okay, be mean. i mean what are you gonna put Look, soul plane on so you can fucking interrupt it no i'll let you finish i'm just i'm just saying because i'm reacting and look i'm way more drunk now than i was with eric Okay, so I know, I know, me. I forgive me, but uh, but I'm not sandbagging you. I'm just explaining. I know you're. Opinion. I know you're not. I'm probably sandbagging you. I'm not trying to. It's just my reaction. Uh, sorry. Go ahead and finish. I will let you finish your point. Uh, I think there is many cases where Eric has misrepresented facts. For example, Riley coming to his place, he lied about the parking area. He lied about there being some kind of threat on his person. Um, I think there's many occasions of him lying. It's when you when you have a charity with these guys of, of, of collecting money and giving money to a, a charity who has absolutely no voice and you're using them to pull money in, their businesses are touch and go. Uh, I think that these guys need to be very clear on what they're doing and what they're giving. All proceeds of this book go to this charity. For every copy that you buy, we're giving $10 to charity. You're, you're not, you can't buy in bulk to send more money to charity. Uh, where this, this is, I agree with. I'm not trying to interrupt you. This I this I agree with, and this I would think... solve so many issues. But I will say this: if there is any confusion, if there is any hint of impropriety, I will hammer you like the fucking sun. If I think there is any amount of money being withheld, or even if you're late, if you're late on a payment by a fucking hour, I will come in like a I will come in like a fucking hurricane and hammer you for that. And all dude, I, I saw I pay was shit late all the time because not I'm... to a fucking charity, dude. Not to a fucking charity. You do not. I know you fucking don't. The bank, yeah, fuck banks. I wouldn't would do it to charity. Right. You're not right. to a okay. charity. What was that? When has Dick ever done a charity? <laughs> <laughs> fucking never. Ah. Okay, go on. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I mean, I did. If yeah, Eric is right, sure. if Illegal. Eric is right. Everybody gets the money. I'm the asshole. I don't give a shit. If I'm right, you guys got a lot bigger problems than me. If you're comfortable with that, whatever you're comfortable with that, go deal with it. You all see the evidence. You see m fucking m Marble Mouth, Eric, try to explain what's happening with charity when all you have to say evidence. is, here's this the is deal. They make X. At this point. Yeah. Yeah. 
Like this everything is... from the ground up other than the actions that Eric took. Yeah. And even that is subject, like even that is speculation as to the reasons why. Yeah, I mean, Eric has more evidence on his side because he literally has a charity coming out stating an amount and stating they've received additional funding. And everything lines up with what he told Nick. I, again, I don't think he explained it very well. Him and Nick got very heated. It was very similar to this. But at the same time, like, he did, like, outwardly, like, explain the whole thing. And Dick's whole premise is just, I don't believe that. Like, that's that's not a valid argument. And your argument, uh, your counter argument to that is, show me. <laughs> How much did it cost to send the charity? Well, actually, you know, it costs $14 or $13. And now you don't know. You could fucking double up and pay $12 for charity. But now the book is available for $5. So if you pay us $5... Man, you palleted fucking you palleted eleven hundred books, which are worthless. That's that's just storage. Storing storing comics is a burden to a charity. They have tons Liquidate. of comics. They only need money. They only need money. Give them the fucking money. I'm liquidating done. liquidating books after the fact has nothing to do with a charity at the time. Like you can at least admit that. Like I know it's easy. It's an easy point to say, oh, you're you got a you got promo code pull up. You're gonna sell your book for five bucks. It was thirty bucks before. It's five bucks. Seventeen bucks is ridiculous. But I think even you can admit, because you would, uh, I think we've talked about this, and you would say, correct me if I'm wrong, Eric yeah. is a bad business person who over-ordered and over inventory after the fact, correct? Yeah. I believe he okay, did end up so, liquidating some. No, they never specified whether this was old stock. I'm pretty sure, like, Eric probably had, like, maybe another... Uh, round of books that were going to be up and ready for sale at a later point and he decided to plan ahead and then he dipped into that for the charity once it had like an overrun yeah which would make so, sense so that's basically how he was able to lower it at a price because he was probably splitting it up between what he allotted for the charity and what he was going to use later down the road yep that would explain the lowering in price. Yep. Yeah, because they could be coming off of his bulk orders. I mean, hell. Yeah. The other thing that doesn't even play into this is, again, like, this comic, a thing that we haven't even touched on, has four different covers. Yeah, that's another thing. It's like specialized orders. You know, so this could have been something that now he, if he didn't, if he overordered, he would have been stuck with a small amount of these books that were technically charity models. Mm -hmm. And if he under orders, which is probably the safer way to play it, he's going to have to take out of his stock like you're inferring. I mean, yeah. that's obviously the better way to do it, taking out of your stock, because then you're not left with some odd number of leftover books. But like Dick's not even not even thought of that that hasn't even approached this conversation yeah i mean that's the other thing it's like he's still selling the comic book so he's got to plan ahead months in advance like what other events he might have or whatever time he might want to reopen the sales for the book yeah so he would have had like two book bulk orders one set aside in uh accounting for the charity but ordered all the same in that one load which would drastically lower the price which yeah. means that would give Eric leeway to lower the price. Yeah. I mean, it, it makes perfect fucking sense. I mean, you want to say that's a bit scummy, but again, it's like business is a business. If they're going to work with a charity, they're going to need like a backup plan. Yeah. And ultimately, the charity is not going to care because in a, in a way dick is right oh, he got what it was promised yeah they're getting what they're promised and they're getting the money mm -hmm. and so they don't care technically as long as everything's fulfilled and everybody's happy read a book that he couldn't retail 
and it yeah. sat in his warehouse and cost him money. So selling at five bucks a book and liquidating out inventory that shouldn't be there has no actual impact on the real original cost of books, shipping, charity, whatever, right? Like we can admit that, right? If he's, uh, selling, if he's selling ISOM number one at five what? bucks, he's probably, he's probably selling it at his loss. Why? Do you think it costs more than five bucks to make that shit? No, but I think it costs more than five bucks to inventory it until now. So let me ask you that. something. Uh, do you think I honestly believe that Eric has perpetrated some kind of fraud? I don't know. Do you? Yeah. You do believe that? <laughs> yeah. I actually don't. Do you, do you believe that I believe it? Dude, I have, I have this problem because I know you. Yeah. I think you will say you believe it whether you do or not. Yeah. That's true, right? Uh, no, I don't think so. But I will you, say whether I do or not. No. If you didn't believe it, you would say, I don't believe Eric uh, has um, a fraud. You would say that? Uh, yeah, I wouldn't even have started on it. I mean, I would have investigated it, but like given it up. I don't know if I, like, look, I love you. You know this. Uh, super gay for you. Uh, you're my partner. <laughs> you should have um, investigated but, either way, dumb shit. <laughs> yeah. I just love that Nick that fucking I love you, man. Stage here. <laughs> Which, <laughs> and he looks like he's been through a war. Like this man looks defeated. Even though he's actually won. I mean he's arguing with the brick wall. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Victory is just like cracking the facade. Yeah, it's still better than ceiling cats though. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, I I don't know if I actually believe you on that. Yeah. I think Yeah, making it up. No, I, I don't think you're making it up. I think you would justify it to yourself. I think you would convince yourself that yeah. you think the bad thing because I I legitimate and look, I don't care why. And and I know I know you and I'm going I'm trying to give you the benefit of the doubt. And I think you You don't have, have to. I know I don't have to, but I did it for Eric and I do it for you. This is the objective thing that I'm talking about that he didn't understand. I think that you actually despite being a troll and an asshole have mm -hmm have a nose or a radar for things that are offensive to you. People are like, why would I believe a troll? I'm like, well, just because someone's a troll doesn't believe they never care. That's not <laughs> a real thing. So um, I, I don't believe that about Dick. But at the same time, I do think that it would be beneficial to you. It would serve your argument to ignore the possibility that you're wrong. All right. I'm going to end it there. <laughs> I'm fucking exhausted. Oh. But that basically gets everything up through the whole charity scam stuff. And then it's mentioned in there, but I also got a little brief section I'll cover next with uh, Riley and what Riley did initially. And then uh, we'll go into the, the more recent stuff. So I'll probably save that for... The next stream, I don't know if the next stream is going to be Sunday or not, though. So I got to figure out what we're doing with the Father's Day deal stuff. And when shit's fucking streaming and everything else. So I may just set my OBS up and record everything all day. But yeah, other than that, that gets everything caught up with Eric July to pretty much present day minus the EVS arc and the Riley arc. <laughs> <laughs> I still can't believe that shit happened. Yeah. Yeah. It's, no, I didn't do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even talked about uh, damn spoilers. Oh shit. Well, I'm gonna dip out. You have yourself right. a good night, man. And thank you for coming on. Day. I do appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks again, bud. Uh, no problem. Huggy, you still here? I'm going to call that a no. <laughs> the disconnect. Yep. All right, let's see here. I think. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. All right, I'll see you then. All right, see you, man. Thank you again. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. All right. Well, you're welcome, Belinda. <laughs> yeah, I think Eric will be fine, honestly. I, I came away even with just watching that stuff plus the EVS stuff and felt like, you know what? God, 
I felt like Nick did a damn good job <laughs> arguing against a friend. And I think he knew in his heart, whatever there is of that, that Eric July was right. So I don't know. Um, but it, it gets more interesting in the second part. So, but other than that, y'all have a good night. Uh, I'm going to add no, no music tonight. So everybody have a good night. Good morning, whatever. And I will talk to you next time. Um, I'll, I don't know if I'll post on the community tab when I'm going to stream. So keep an eye out for Sunday. I'll update it either way. Thank y'all. Bye.